Get ready, Santa Cruz County, for the Lions Senior Bowl. SLV's Doug Morris leads a North squad with plenty of offensive firepower, while MVC's David Reese directs a South team loaded with defensive standouts and no shortage of offensive talent. It's the 6th Annual Lions Senior Bowl, and it's next on CTV Sports. Hello and welcome to Carl Connolly Stadium in what is only can be described as a beautiful day here for some football. My name is J.D. Haddon alongside Kurt Edwards and we are bringing you the 6th Annual Lions Senior Bowl here from Cabrillo College. And Kurt, let's get right into this. We should have a great game today with 10 schools represented in today's outing. We're seeing a lot of different seniors from across this great league and Kurt, two teams, short season to get prepared. How do you as a senior get ready for this game and playing with someone who you're not necessarily used to playing with? Well, that's kind of the the difficult part for a JD is you have five days. That's it. And it really comes down to the coaches and their ability to communicate. And of course, you as a senior player being willing to say, hey, you are now no longer my enemy. You are my friend. So therefore, we're going to have to block together, tackle together. So you just have to change your mentality and how you look with your teammates. But you still have to go and look across the line of scrimmage and knock the stuffing out of the guy who has a different helmet on than you do. Absolutely do, and Kurt, you alluded briefly to the coaches, and while there may be some inconsistencies in this roster, some players not used to playing with each other before, the coaches, two tenured coaches here who bring a lot of consistency to these rosters and hopefully some discipline to both sides of the field. Well, both of them do that one. Doug Morris from San Lorenzo Valley, 25 years in the league, good, solid discipline, great communicator. He's going to play all of his players. He's going to make sure he puts them in a spot where they're going to be able to succeed. Same thing with Coach Reese. He's only been up here, he comes out of Texas, winning program down in Texas, good solid discipline, knows how to put his football players in a spot where they're going to be able to succeed. You already said it. Aptos has 23 players on this squad. So give you an idea why they were so good in the SECAL. So he's going to have an opportunity to put a whole package in with just Aptos running the offense if he wants to do it. But it's communication, getting the kids to buy into a very, very easy system of football, but also motivating them, which both of these coaches are good at, and going out and playing a good hard 48 minutes of football. Absolutely, both these coaches some great motivators as they've been able to show with their own personal success. Well today's game, the sixth annual Santa Clara Lions Bowl is brought to you in part by Santa Cruz County Lions Club. All proceeds from the game benefit the program supporting hearing and sight conservation as well as on the development of our community's youth. Find out more at santacruzlions.org. And welcome back to the 6th Annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl. I'm J.D. Haddon alongside Kurt Edwards, again bringing this game back to you full speed with continued, with continued pregame coverage. And to let you guys know, CTV Sports is a presentation of community television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to access media. Visit us at communitytv.org. This presentation is made possible in part by several other great sponsors, such as Cruz.io Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider, offering high-speed wireless internet, a co-location data center, and flexible workspaces with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com. At Santa Cruz Downer, Diner, you'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz and on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great and food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. I wanted to get onto those tires so quick. Watsonville Tires, happy holidays from Watsonville Tires and Lube, where you'll find reliable customer service at respectable prices. At Watsonville on 127 Lee Road, just north of Beach Street, offering discount tire sales and repairs for semi-trucks, autos, SUVs, and tractor sires. Great savings and all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at Watsonville Tire & Lube. If it's got wheels, Watsonville Tires has you covered. Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side and Mission Swift. 
Family owned and operated since 1979, Upper Crust offers nightly diner specials. And every Tuesday is all you can eat pizza, dine in or take out. On the web at uppercrust.com or call 423-9010. Upper Crust, authentic Sicilian square pizza is their specialty. And also by Independent Rentals. Independent offers rental trucks, vans, and trailers. Customer satisfaction is very important at Independent Rentals, and they provide it every day. Rent local, rent local, rent independent. Online at independentrentalsco.com. And let's go down to Kelsey Olson down on the field with a special guest. Kelsey? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Lion Debbie Johnson. She is the chairman of the Lions Bull. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Kelsey. Can you tell me a little bit about the Lions? Who are you, and what do the Lions do? Well, we're an international organization, and our primary purpose is to raise money to uh, give sight and hearing impaired, and also to provide scholarships for our athletes and any community uh, service, Boy Scouts, Sea Scouts, we're there for our community. Can you tell me how the Lions Bowl came to be? Um, the Lions came in 19, let me see, two, let me see, you know, six years ago, they started off the Lions Bowl. Uh, for seniors. It used to be a junior college event and then we decided to make it for a uh, high school senior all-star game. So uh, this is our sixth annual and um, we're really excited. This is for the kids. Do you have advice for the players tonight? Well, our advice is to get a good education, first of all. Enjoy today. This is all for you guys and um, we just wish you all the best and this is the best gift we can give you is to have your last hurrah. Thank you, Debbie. Back up to the booth. Thank you, Kelsey. And let's throw it to some of the keys for victory for today's game, starting with the northern coach, Doug Morris. Doug Morris, he's got some great keys. Coming in, enjoy the moment. Couldn't say it better if I wanted to. Stay healthy, play clean, which is his motto, and, of course, score touchdowns. And prior to this game, we got a chance to talk to Doug Morris, and we asked him, what is your approach coaching these kids going into this game? Our philosophy uh, in coaching these kids is pretty simple. Number one thing is, is for them to have fun. And we established the very first night that this is their last high school football experience. And uh, what we want them to get out of it is the camaraderie that football brings, not just to a single school, but now we're blending adversaries uh, they're getting to know that what was once the enemy is now the teammate. And it's really a very neat thing to see as these kids get to know each other. Um, they are having fun. They're having fun. They're very good football players. Uh, and they know what they're doing. It doesn't take a lot of coaching. But we're just going out there and looking forward to Saturday when they get to play their last game. All right, Coach, Coach Morris does a great job at San Lorenzo Valley. He looks a lot younger these days. Now, on the other side of the field, we've got the South, and that's David Reese from Monta Vista Christian. His keys are everybody plays, and he's got about 60 players, so that's going to be a lot. Balance the run and the pass and attack, and stop the North hey, running game because they got some pretty good runners. And again, prior to this game, we went up to Coach Reese and says, What's your philosophy as you prepare these kids for this contest? What's your philosophy going into this game? What we're planning on getting out of this experience for the guys is an opportunity to, for them to play one more game. Um, it's kind of an honor for them. It's for the seniors. Uh, it'll be the last high school football game that they'll get to play in. So we'd like to have them have a positive experience. It's, it's not so much the win or loss as it is just the opportunity to fellowship with some players they've played against you know, all year and some schools that have pretty good rivalries. So they're getting to know that uh, these guys they're playing with really aren't bad guys. They're pretty good guys and, and got a lot of talent to get to, to see those guys up close and in person and get to know them for a week while we practice and then get to play with them in a game. Some of these guys will get some uh, friendships out of this that they uh, wouldn't necessarily have that experience to do being from two rival schools. So it's, uh, yeah, and, and the approach of it is, is to, um, get all the guys some playing time and, and let them experience the opportunity to get to play, you know, at a, in a college setting. We're at Cabrillo, so that's kind of neat for the guys and also for them to get to experience. Uh, hopefully one side is going to get to go on a positive experience of, of winning the game, but it's not necessarily for the win or the loss of the game as it is just for the guys to get to uh, play one more game. 
<laughs> All righty. Great to Good job for both of these coaches. Here's a peek at what the SCCAL standings were all going to be. We got 10 teams in two different leagues. Here's how the SCCAL finally broke down. Aptos won. It's in the top spot, 6-0. and You see how they fell out. St. Francis had a really tough one go all the way through. And, of course, then you go to the NBL, the Monterey Bay League final standings, which Monta Vista Christian had a great year, finishing 5-1. and one. Christopher out of Gilroy also 5-1. and one. Monterey, Watsonville, and Pajaro Valley had a tough year, but building programs all the way through. But it kind of gives you an idea where we're getting some of these players from. Ten teams in Santa Cruz County, up from the north and the south, and our referees, Bruce Hermanson. He's going to be the man in the white hat, and you can see the rest of these great got all the way through. The back judge is going to be really full of a lot of problems all day. Thank you so much, Kurt. When we come back, we'll be back with more action here from pregame and the beginning of the start here on CTV Sports. Welcome back to the sixth annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl. My name is JD Hatton alongside Kurt Edwards again here at Cabrillo College. We are about ready for kickoff soon. And Kurt, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic game today. What can only be described as a beautiful day. And we should have some good football in our hands. We'll have some great football in our hands. Last year when this when we did the Lions Bowl again, it was raining. And I mean, it was horrible, crum crummy weather. Now it's absolutely beautiful, sunny, clear skies. Great day for football. Of course, any day is a good day for football. Absolutely, especially this time of year. And both coaches kind of alluded to it earlier and their keys to the victory it's all about making memories and camaraderie for these players. Their last chance really to go out there and give the crowd what they're looking for. So this should be an exciting game here as we have both teams coming out onto the field. Almost ready for the kickoff about now. It looks like the North will kick to the South receiving. And you can imagine the South would want the ball in their hands their offensive playmakers to start this game. Right. you got Austin Deitz back there, number two from Monta Vista. He's going to be the deep man up in front of him is Danny Saparito, he's his partner in crime, also from Monta Vista, so a lot of speed back there. There have been some uh, adaptations to the rules, and we can get through those as the game progresses, but the intensity starts to build up. These kids have been working for a week. They've been out without the pads, some of them, for the better part of a month. Monta Vista went pretty deep into the, SC, into the CCS standings, getting beat by Carmel, which eventually got beat by Palma in their particular division and so some of their players will still have the football bruise and mentality if you will some of the others well early part of november they folded up their uh, helmets and everything else and put them away so anybody that's ever played this sport of football knows when you get out on that field you can smell it hey, and ready to go now that we've got the football not a football but the football will be ready to kick it off. And uh, Bieto from Scotts Valley, who had just a fantastic year as a special teams kicker for the Falcons. He's going to take the ball deep, and we'll see what's going to take place. And we should indeed be seeing a lot of Bieto today as he gets set to kick to the south here. Great to have you with us today. Let's begin the game. This will be Dyke. South will receive the ball at the goal line, bring it up the middle, now cutting to the right and stop just across the 15 yard line. And that's where the South offense will begin shot for the first time and they'll be first and 10 there at the 17 yard line. So the South comes out and they'll be led by Taylor Cohen at quarterback. We'll be seeing a lot of the two different quarterbacks for, for the South today, but Cohen out there to start the game, player from Monta Vista as he will get the first call. It's gonna be interesting to see how the coaches do it. Now, here's part of it. You have to have two running backs, so a two running back set. You can have motion, so a tight end, two running backs, two receivers. That has to happen. Cohen takes the ball and throws on an out to the right. That's completed about the 20 yard line. Breaking and tackling. Out of bounds. It's going to be a great way to start. That is one for one. Dice on the reception. Here's a shot at the start. As we already mentioned, Dice was great one. Holbert, Serrano, De Los Santos, and Griffin. Those are your running backs and wide receivers. The offensive line, primarily an Aptos group. Price, Yanovich, Ritz, Gilmore, and Yarena. 
very, very solid group of seniors on both of these squads. Second and five again, we see two back sets. Snap goes to Cohen, rolling to his right, and he'll throw, and that one is going to be ruled incomplete at about the 25 yard line. So we'll begin again at third and five. As the South tries to prevent going three and out here. Let's take a look at the defense, though, from the North. That's a formidable force here. They are good. You see McClure, DiBieto, uh, Bieto, who had that one. Linebacker's always busy. You cannot run from the middle backers, so that's going to be tough. The defense line, they're going to have a whole bunch of fun just learning each other's moves. Now, remember, they've played against these guys. Now, they just haven't necessarily played with the guy on their left or right. Now, again, I formation from the South. Handoff up the middle give, and... There's going to be about a gain of a yard on that one as the North swarming to the ball. And the South unable to get anything going, and we'll see a punt here. Serrano from Watsonville, the initial ball carrier on that one, and you saw a lot of people get to the ball very, very quickly. Uh, Valdez, Javier from Soquel, number 66, did a nice little loop stunt, was in there on one of the initial hits. South, will be South punter is Guerrero as we wait for the 11th man to come on the field. Now we get a flag thrown from the back, so we get the first call from the official on the day. And we'll wait to hear what the call is as the play stops, whistle blown all around. And we're going to get an illegal formation call, it looks like. Well, one of the things you're going to find out in an all-star game, especially when you've only had a week to prepare, is getting special teams out where they're supposed to be, getting everybody lined up in the, in properly. Because we'll find out. Dead ball, substitution infraction on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. So that is a big changing penalty there, Don. We're going to see our first punt from the South, but instead we'll see a first and 10 as the refs will meet about a little bit longer to converge. Yeah, we're going to wave that penalty. Yeah, and the flag you. is going to be waved away right. after that call. So we'll go back to we'll go back to punting. So it's fourth and four. So, so it's going to be fourth four, and, and we're going to punt. Hang in there, JD. In it gets even more fun as we go on. Guerrero with these very variations. Guerrero will punt. Locatelli back deep to receive. Notice no rushing on punt the kick. Comes from Guerrero. And that's going to be. Locatelli's going to let it go, and he'll let that roll. Takes a big south bounce, and finally down at about the 20-yard line. So probably couldn't have drawn it up any better than that as they get a huge punt, and Sapatoro, the one finally down at the end, down in the punt. So that's where the north will begin, first and 10. And if for the south, it's a problem of too many great quarterbacks. For the north, it is all on the shoulders of Joe Rocha. Yep, out of Santa Cruz, did a great job running the fly offense all the way through. There's Joe, six foot, 180 pounder, did a great job for the Cardinals this year. He is it. Well, I shouldn't say he's it. They do have a backup to the backup quarterback, and Coach Morris says, I hope I don't have to use him. Rocha in the I formation, man in motion. He'll run a toss across the left side, and. Getting some room there before he shoved out of bounds is Corbella. And he'll get about four yards there, so the ball will be placed right around the 25-yard line, second and six. Here, here are the North Stars again. Corbella, the running back, who you'll see. Benko, the fullback. Wartman, Langley, and Locatelli at the line, though. Numerous players from Scotts Valley and, and Clausen and Mari, Mari Gondona and Fleba also on the line there. North comes back out. Second and six, again, from about the 24. Rocha in his checks. Now he comes handoff up the middle and just barely great cross line. Now breaks a tackle. Is Corbella running hard on that play over right across the left tackle. Gets a helmet on the field, and he'll get about three on that one. Third and three. Ball placed at the 27. Here's the defensive starters for the South, Espinoza, Saparito, Amaya, linebackers always busy, Gorman, Tokar, and Capuro. And that defensive line, you'll notice a little bit of a four down lineman. The Whitney in the middle, always somebody to deal with. We saw Corbello run the first couple times. He led the SCCAL in rushing this year. Now Rocha will bring three backs in the back there, two wide out, hand out up the middle to Corbello. This one stuffed at the line of scrimmage and brought back down. And a whole swarm of different colored helmets in on that play. Definitely in there was Anthony Gorman, and it'll be about fourth and two, and the North will have to punt. Also, Takar, number 28, from his middle linebacker position. You can see good penetration, and really on that offensive line, 
is just being able to get off the ball or off the snap as a complete unit, go off, hit somebody in front of you. Defense, I've always figured out, I think it's a little bit easier to play defense on a freelance type of a situation than it is offense. Beto to punt. Deitch awaits at the 30. Good snap, Beto's kick is gonna be a little short. Deitch will let that bounce. It's gonna be down by the north, caught right about the 37 yard line, 33 yard line, excuse me. And we'll get a first down there. So the north trades three and outs with the south and we'll see who comes out for quarterback. And it looks like it's gonna be Cone again as he goes back to the huddle to lead the south out on the field for the second time. Yeah, we talked a little bit before the game, JD, on how they were going to do this. Two quarterbacks, both all leagues in their respective leagues. It was it gonna be a series to series, quarter to quarter? Well, so far we've seen Cohen in on two distinct series. Cohen on first down, three step drop, now throws over to the right and incomplete pass. J.P. Holbert couldn't get his head around in time though he was open here in the flat. Second and 10, ball again on the 34. J.P. a solid performer for the Grizzlies of Pajaro Valley and that's gonna be part of the timing routes. You, you know, new receivers, new quarterback. Do you run your route too deep, too shallow to get your head around? When's the release point? That's pretty tough to get done in a week's worth of practice. Cohen working out of the eye. And that's gonna be taken off. And to about the 40 yard line is gonna be Riggs Powell. So the South pulling a quarterback switch there. And Powell, the more running oriented quarterback, he looks like he will stay in the huddle there. Third and four and we'll see what Coach Reese wants to do in this situation. He'd love to avoid another three and out. Well, Riggs, uh, Powell's got 107 carries for 1,162 yards, so he likes to tuck that pigskin underneath his wing and try and make some yardage out of it. He did a nice job that time. Powell has two blacks, two back splits to the left, takes the ball, fakes the handoff, now runs. He's gonna throw downfield, and wide open is Dage caught at the 30. Can he break the tackle? No, he's gonna be pulled down. First and 10, right around the 13 yard line. Huge play, and Powell comes in and gives him the spark. You've got to respect the run, and Powell comes out, flips the ball down there. Austin has gotten deep behind the defender on that side, it was Dalton, and he's able to work his way all the way down to right about the 13 yard line in North Territory. Riggs Powell just does a fantastic job. All of sort of the Steve Young type, you've got to respect his running capability. Give up the middle by Powell. And Powell's gonna keep that ball, run to the outside, touchdown. Powell faking everybody out with that play as the whole defensive line there, no one was gonna catch him as he sprints to the right side pylon. And it's just like that, the South has struck in first, up six nothing. Good play, great job and good read by Riggs from his quarterback position. And again, as a defense, you've got to step up. You have to respect the run on that dive position. And you also have to respect everything else that this young quarterback can do. Saparito will kick Cohen to hold. And Powell gives his team a spark. Snap down, no rushing allowed on the point. Kick is up, and that is Zinn. So Riggs Powell comes on in the second series and gives the South the spark that they need to propel them to the first touchdown. You watch this, this is a great read by Powell. Fakes a dive, and everybody bid on it because he just decided to ride that ball into the running's back hands as long as he could. Never overcommitted, and then to sprint around to the outside, good blocking on the offensive front for the South. They trapped everybody inside. You can see the blocking on the outside, and that allows Powell just to trip right on into the end zone. No problem whatsoever. Credit's a very good block to uh, Medina of Aptos. So Medina and Powell worked together all season long, and he was the one on the outside that sealed the defense in and allowed Powell to just easily go into the end zone for the touchdown. And you have to credit a lot of that to the great stadium here that we have, and the atmosphere is fantastic today. As we're here at Cabrillo College again, Carl Conley Stadium in the South, ready to kick off. 7-0, this one kind of a squib kick down the middle of the field, fielded by the North, running up the gut, some good blocking there. And we're gonna see a run across the 50, and finally brought down is the running back Corbella, first and 10, and he strikes just back for the North, as they're looking to get something going into Southern Territory as he placed the ball right around the 47 yard line, and that's where the North will begin shop for this drive. Well, anybody that's watched Scotts Valley play, 
and Corbello knows what he is capable of, not only as a running back, but also his return. Nice little wedge formation up the middle. Corbello did a nice job staying within the wedge. Once that opening came, he shot right through it. So the North comes out first in 10. Rocha will work under center out of the split eye. Sends a man in motion. Now will hand it off to that man in motion and pull down right about the line of scrimmage. There's going to be a flag thrown, though. Is number five, Locatelli. And we'll see if we get a potential horse collar tackle there. Eric Griffin, number 14 from Monta Vista, six foot four, 202 pounds. Did a nice job of jumping across the line of scrimmage, and we'll see if he jumped a little bit Personal too quick. Personal foul, horse collar on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, number 14. And that is indeed what it is. So Griffin just pulling the old hang on for dear life strategy there. He gets flagged for it. The North moves further, closer to that end zone. On the 32 now, first and 10. Let's go, they come boy. out here again in the split eye, split off to the right. Corbella is the deep back. Rocha takes the snap, up the middle, and Corbella will dive forward for about four yards on that play. Again, good job of hitting the hole. One thing, if you're going to go up the middle, J.D., obviously you want to be able to pop that thing, get into those second and third levels. But if you can pick up four each time you're going down the field, you're going to be in great shape, and you're going to establish dominance at the line of scrimmage. We've spoken a lot about that chemistry that the South has, having so many players on their roster from North. Corbella, though, from Scotts Valley, and some of the other linemen, so he's worked a great deal with them. The shot of Dante McLeod, a minute ago, there's Steve Edwards, coaching staff for Monta Vista, the Mustangs, their entire coach, not their entire coaching staff, but a great deal of them coaching the Southern team. Rocha, handoff here. Be brought up the middle, close to the first down marker is Locatelli. Now Locatelli comes out of Santa Cruz. Nice tackle, by the way, that time by number 14. Griffin, again, those guys seem to be going hand in hand. You see he starts to go on that sweep, and you're just going to read the turnouts. Where's the outside man? Where's If you can block inside, can your guard get to the backer? Can your tackle get there? And then you're just going to be able to turn it up. Picks up a nice couple of yards, makes it a pretty easy third down call. Actually, you can get complicated. You can throw the ball, you can run the ball, because you only have to pick up a yard. Locatelli now sends in motion. Rocha, Rocha left to Corbella. He's going to get the first down and a little more across the 20 yard line into the red zone. First and 10 there on that left side sweep. Corbella able to get the job done. Working again against Griffin, whose name we've called a deal, a fair deal in this first half. Well, when you're starting to do the sweeps, you're going to ask your linebackers to really move and fly to the outside. Capuro also number five out there. You're going to try and just evade that front group, that uh, defensive front. Get your guards to pull. Influence blocks. In other words, you're not going to block the guy in front of you. You're going to look downfield and pick off somebody down the, down the field. Rocha will give again to Corbella. He will run up the middle, dragging a defender with him until about the 15-yard line. Well, that time you had Alex Benko from Scotts Valley in motion. You want to, with motion, J.D., you're always trying to influence either physically getting somebody to make that step or mentally to watch motion and then just come either right down the middle, try and soften that underbelly, or just a little bit of a counter go back across the grain. Ball placed at about the 15 and a half yard line. We'll see what this offense will do. Rocha, since Locatelli in motion again. Now he'll motion back across. Toss on the right side. Corbella will turn the corner. Makes a man miss. Pushed out of bounds around the four yard line. Corbella. Corbella gets it inside the 10 Corbella and is taken out of bounds. First at the four and goal. Line. Right at about the four. A good run 20, by him. He's running hard all day. Did a good job. You see double motion on that one. Watch Benko if you're going to be, you get a chance. He's downfield. He throws this great block. There it is. Nice job. Gets Corbello another couple of yards as he goes down the field. Two teamworks working together, and they did a nice job. So it'll be first and goal. Corbello has shown his skills at the down, as being a downhill runner, as he's shown kind of all season here. Oh, he is a very good downhill runner, a very determined runner. One wide out, Locatelli in motion. Now he sets up in the middle of the line. The ball to Corbella, and he'll be stopped short. He's dog piled on. He'll gain about two. 
gets to about the two-yard line. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, you know this is an all-star game. No trophy, except, of course, it's, you know, the Lions, Santa Cruz host Lions Bowls all-star game. So there's a lot of pride in fact. You're going to start seeing some fire go up with these kids. You're going to start seeing that football attitude that made them very good football players throughout the entire football season. All seniors out here, folks. Very, very good, talented seniors. All of them want to walk away with a W. So second and goal, we'll have a late sub for the North as now they set up shop. Rocha under center. I formation split to the right. Snap to Rocha, give to Corbella, lowers his shoulder, he's gonna be turned away though. The handoff to number 26. Right Once there again, in the Corbella. middle looks like Corbella gets close a to the gangle to the of linebackers line. there. They're the able one. to stop him before he was able to get number across the goal line. Austin took card number 28 from Monta Vista. One of those linebackers was in there on the tackle. The you know, Corbella had a pretty good opening, and I've, you know, I've, obviously I'm way up here. I don't have that great ground sight that he has, and he's a fantastic runner. But I think at this point in time, you've got to hit that hole going 90 miles an hour pretend you're just a battering ram. He seemed like he was juking just a little bit more than he should have been, and that allowed Tokar number 28 to come up and make the tackle. Third and one, Corbella's had some fantastic holes so far today. Rocha will try to keep it himself. And a way to signal from, and we'll finally get a signal, touchdown on the far side of the field. So Rocha on the keeper will sneak it in, and just like that, the North back into this. Six, seven is the score, waiting that extra point. Yeah, that was a good one, and he watched, the, watched that line. He really didn't have a good hand on that football. He took the snap, started to go down his leg. He was able to get that one, but that stopped his momentum. The no, South almost was able to get that good penetration from the other side of the line of scrimmage to stop him. So a little bit of a confusing play there by Coach Morris as the kick, the kick is, up and it is, is good. So I think everybody in the stadium expecting the star running back so far, Corbella, to get the ball. Instead, he gives it to the quarterback, Rocha, and the game tied now, seven apiece. There's another look at it, and just barely in, but it doesn't matter whether you cross it by an inch or 10 yards, as long as you get in. This day in football history, December 7th, 1944, the Green Bay Packers 14, the New York Giants seven at the Polo Grounds. Yes, folks, they used to play football at the Polo Grounds. Green Bay's sixth NFL championship. Head coach Curly Lambeau, they added on to that one, by the way, a couple, you know, last year. So Absolutely. they continue to do that one. By the way, in 1944, many of the players who were would have been in the NFL were busy at that point in time in World War II. So a lot of the stars that would have been part of that game were not part of that game. So some calling that one of the most forgotten about championships. But Green Bay six, they look like they could be getting another one pretty shortly this season with the way they've been playing. It's 7-all here in this one, though. Beto gets ready to kick. So both teams going three and out in their first possessions, then kind of finding an offensive rhythm, and it'll be interesting to see who the South brings out at quarterback here as they receive the ball off a great kick from Beto. Caught it about the five and running it out is going to be Dage. Dage looks to go right, will be brought down right around the 23 yard line. And a good arm tackle there by Stanton Same from the north. Austin Dietz does a good job. Wide receiver, returner, and that time he's just trying to get in there behind his blockers. You know, to get any time you get out beyond the 20, this time we're at the 23 yard line, you've done a pretty good job. Bieto does a nice job in his kicks. You know, he gets it high and deep, and he doesn't get too many returned. Cohen out of the I formation. Give up the middle. Now breaking a tackle over to the right, but stopped right about the 27-yard line. So second and six, as there was a pretty good running play there. Serrano, number 32 from Pajaro Valley, does a nice job of going, just going a a little bit of a counter on that play. Good job by the Kirby. offensive line to get down the field and seal off the inside because that's what you're looking to do. Kick your defensive end or tackle out, seal off the inside from the linebackers, and let your running back have a party. This will be an interesting look. Cone under center, but out wide on the right side is Riggs Powell. Cone will fake it. Moving to his right. Looks like he's going to have to keep it, and he's brought down behind the line. 
Good pursuit there by the North and able to bring him down is number 24, Bieto. Bieto's out there, also Halbleve, number 23 from Santa Cruz. Good pursuit, and that's what you want to see, J.D. You want to see good pursuit, good read by the linebackers. And I'll tell you, they've got some pretty active. Thabout, number 40, Brent does a good job. Six foot two, 185 pounds. He's one of the very, very active linebackers. And one reason, Santa Cruz had a great season. They were three and three in league this year. Number third, 11 for Cone. Looks left the whole time. Now finally will throw a little high for Dave, so it's gonna be incomplete. And the South will have to punt. Now that time I'm looking at the watching Cohen, and he steps up. Nice job South of feeling starts. the pressure. Steps up, good job, pocket. Great job by the offensive line. He had four or five yards. And, you know, is it going to get a first down? No, but it's going to make your punt a little bit better. But he had an opportunity to hit his counterpart out there, Austin, but he just threw it too high. Also back, number 26. Hunt comes in, and that's going to be bobbled snap, but Guerrero will get it away. Look at Tony Fairfields at the fair catch at about the 35-yard line, and that's where the North will begin. So it's 7-all. The momentum seemed to have swung in the other direction, and we'll see if Joe Rocha and Corbella in the Northern offense is able to capitalize on this as they come back out onto the field. You know, it's always fun. You look at some of the players that couldn't be here, uh, Jonah Hodges, who was a defensive player of the year for the SCCAL, also an outstanding running back for them. He's not here because Domhoff, who's the basketball coach of Santa Cruz, says, no, 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 no. You already played your football. Go away. You, know, you stay here on the hard court. Johnny Cooper, an outstanding running back for uh, San Lorenzo Valley. He's hurt, but there's a lot of seniors who are two-sport, three-sport athletes who are just not here today. Rocha gives up the middle. Corbella is going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard on that run. As that interior line for the south, all Aptos helmets in on that one. Looks like that main tackle was made by Chase Whitney. Good play from him as you see them stuffing the gap there. And just a whole bunch of defenders all around that one. And that's one of the things that the defensive line, if you can control the line of scrimmage, just work on containing the gaps. You're down three or down four, and right now you've just got a three, you know, it's just kind of a, a five three look or a five two look with the outside guys up so they're defensive ends or defensive linebackers, outside backers. Man in motion for Rocha on second down. This to his drop, now looks for a little option, flips it out to Corbella, and he is stuff absolutely met as soon as he got the ball and you talked about it earlier Kurt good penetration good penetration that's what you wanted to see on that play and that's absolutely what the south got there bring up a long third down great tackle there by Corley he did a nice job just a good job by Corley he sat back and read it you can see that the pressure was going to be on the quarterback and you can see that the running back is that little safety valve just in case the quarterback gets in trouble which happens just about every play He's out there to try and you know, get that pitch so the quarterback stays alive and he dies. So taking one for the team in the literal sense, it's third and 11 here. You don't think Luck stayed alive just by taking all those hits, do you? No, he gave it to his running back. Here, you take it. Rocha steps back, rolls to his right. Ball's going to be a little high there. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. The North will have to punt. And the South fired up to get a stop there. Ball over the top. That was Langley, the intended receiver out of Harbor. Saparito, Danny, number one for Monta Vista on the coverage. The quarter's been a quick one, JD. We're down to .9. Seconds left in this one as Deitch and Rondez are back. Vieto to kick. For the North All-Stars. Good snap. <laughs> Vieto takes his time, gets the punt away as you hear the buzzer for the first quarter. Will be signal Dage will try a fair catch, catch one field it there. And, and finally takes. downed at about the 37 yard line. It's gonna be down. by number 77 for the North. That's Fogelquist. That one, Fogelquist in on that. Good old Spencer was in on one. Gets his hands on the ball, which a lineman doesn't get to do much. But we're down with one quarter to play in this, you know, just fun all-star game. Absolutely. So we're through with one, the North 7, the South 7. We're all tied up here at Carl Connolly Stadium. And 
for this one. Santa Cruz Diner brings to you this game. Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz and on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food priced right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And Watsonville Tires. Happy holidays from Watsonville Tires and Lubes, where you'll find reliable customer services at respectable prices. In Watsonville at 127 Lead Road, just north of Beach Street, offering discount tire sales and repairs for semi-trucks, autos, SUVs, and tractor tires. Great savings on all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at Watsonville Tire and Lube. If it's got wheels, Watsonville Tires has got you covered. Buy Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operated since 1979, Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials and every Tuesday is all you can eat pizza, dine in or take out. On the web at uppercrust.com or call 423-9010. Upper Crust, authentic Sicilian square pizza is our specialty. And Independent Rentals. Independent offers rental trucks, vans, and trailers. Customer satisfaction is very important at Independent Rentals, and they prove it every day. Rent local, rent independent. Online at independentrentalco.com. So back to the action as we begin the second quarter. Riggs Powell under center for the Southern All-Stars, and we're going to have a little delay here as the clock's showing the wrong time. Now this is basketball. We go 12. Eight minutes, there we go. Now we're back up to 12. There we go. You, you want to make sure that these players get their full due and as, as well as these great fans get a chance to see some good football. First and 10, Powell under center from the 37, takes it, fakes the handoff, now keep it himself up the left side, has some yards there, close to the first down marker. He's gonna be Powell as he spun down right around the Cabrillo College logo. You can get a great idea. That was Holzer, Andrew Holzer, number 38. Powell, just a big, tough runner, spins, just wrestles him down. He is going to be, somebody who gets him next year to play football is really going to enjoy the enthusiasm and intensity this young man brings to the football field. And he is indeed called for a first down. So first and 10, the ball spotted at about the 48-yard line. Powell has really brought a spark to the Southern offense. He comes again under center from the I formation. Fakes a handoff, rolling to his right. That throw is completed across the 50, and that'll be a great first down after breaking a tackle. What a great pass and just run after the catch there from Powell and Griffin as they're able to connect and bring the South another first down. Again, just a little rollout. You have to respect it. There's a nice put job by Griffin, catching with both hands, holding on to it and not wanting to go out of bounds. Bring the hit to your opponent. Every coach will tell you to do it. McClure, number 28, in on one of the hits. So it's first down. Powell's now out of the shotgun. Looks right, throwing a deep ball left side. Has a man, and that's going to fall incomplete. Flag thrown, though. And we'll see. There is definitely some contact there. As Dal Dalton down at the end there might have been a little... A little too comfortable with this receiver. Well, one of the things you're going to do, they may call it you know, face guarding, if you will, because he never really turned his head back around. He jumped up. He did make contact with the intended receiver, Deitch, but the, maybe just a little bit prematurely. You know, Great job of knocking the ball out of the intended receiver's hands. And it will be a pass interference call, so the South will be moving the ball forward after that one. Pass interference. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. 15-yard penalty and a first down. And you get a, a pickup. You watch the defender. He's looking at the receiver. He's not turned back to find the ball yet. And there's your face guarding right up there, plus his hands right up in the uh, opponent's face, got there before the ball did. Good call by the official. So it's first down, and the give by Powell be up the middle, breaking to the left and having a first down with some great running there is number 42, and that's going to be Rojas. He'll get a first down for the South as they're able to bring some power running this offense. Philip Rojas does a nice job, goes through the line of scrimmage. He's got that ball all wrapped up. And an excellent job of blocking on the left side of that line by the South, and they were doing a good job. Ivanovich, number 78, doing a fantastic job. Whistles all over the place. And we have a flag down on the far side of the field. 
We'll see, it might have been a little bit of movement. Kyle Hunter, number seven, checks into the game for the South. Kyle out of Aptos. We're gonna get an encroachment call. Encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, play results in a first down. So now it's a first down. It'll be first and goal as the ball's placed at the seven yard line. So the South moving pretty confidently down the field. They set up now with a chance to take a shot at the end zone. You notice it's an all Aptos offense. And that ball will go, and that is gonna be a touchdown. Southern All-Stars running another trickery play there, and number seven, Kyle Hunter, running that ball in, giving the South a 13-7 lead. Nice job all the way through. Actually, that was a fake to them. They faked to Hunter and gave it to the Stout, who did a great job of coming through. But I noticed one thing, J.D., all Aptos helmets out there on that play. Marvin Luna is at the point after touchdown. The kick is That'll up be and good. it is. And that's one of the advantages good. of having so many Aptos players on this roster. As the Southern coaches are able to kind of run that set. We spoke earlier on the field to that coaching staff. They thought they were going to use it in short yardage situations. And it looks like it's pretty effective down there in the red zone. As it's able to bring the South a one score lead, 14 to 7 here in this game. And, if, you know, going into this game, I figured mm, it could be an entertaining, fun little ball game. Take a look from the backside. There's that nice little inside handoff. You can see motion going in both directions. Very tough for the defensive defense to read. Destout was a nice job getting that ball and corralling it. Nice high arm, giving Powell a good opportunity to slam that thing right up into his belly. Close down, in he goes. So it's 14 to seven, just like that, as a drive of the South was able to capitalize on a few penalties the North made. And they lead this game here. Luna is your kicker. And Locatelli back deep. This will be a little squib kick down the left side. Ball will be taken by the South. Of course, Bella will find some room here and get across the 40 before he's brought down. And he's brought down. At first and 10 will be the call here. And he was brought down there after a pretty good run, able to have some good vision here. We see him fielding the ball pretty quickly, but able to get some room. And you got to like Holbert following him all the way to make the tackle. But Corbella putting his team with some pretty good field position to start the drive. Good job. And it's a nice job by him coming up. Remember, remember, that ball is hot. That's a live ball on the kickoff. So Corbelli got a great hop on that ball and then took it and came up. But you're right, it was a good, good effort on the coverage team. Rocha under center. Given to Corbella, and he is not able to get to the outside as he's brought down by Whitney, who had some great penetration through that line of scrimmage. Yeah, as a defensive lineman, you want to get a yard, two yards in there. You want to make sure you're not getting a trap. But notice how that whole side does a good job of sealing off the right side. Nothing was going to be able to come through. And it was just easy pickings all the way through. So it'll be second down. The mark him back at the original line of scrimmage. Rocha comes ready under center here. About 10 minutes to play with this one. Get just beginning the second quarter. Rocha has a split eye to the left side. Let's look at telling motion to that side. Drops back, looking to throw right now, will keep it himself, gets across the line of scrimmage before brought down, ball comes out. And there's going to be a scramble for it, and it looks like it'll be recovered by the North. Serrano looked like Marcus was the one that was initially in there on the hit. But there's just a lot of good pursuit South by the Southern squad. It doesn't matter which way the ball is going, somebody's going in. Avila's also going for it. There's Strom, and he's managed to get the ball loose on that one. And the scramble from everybody else. You see, fortunately, there was a member of the Northern team that happened to be there to flatten the ball. Fortunately, indeed, but it is third and long here. Rocha rolls left. Going down the field, he's got Locatelli, he'll catch it! Nobody's gonna catch him, Locatelli will score! 
and a great play. Dial up a big one when you need it, and Coach Doug Morris has brought his team back to even there with a coverage breakdown. 13 to 14 there, pending the extra point, and some great play there from Rocha and Locatelli. Absolutely fantastic. You watch run, run, run. Everybody stepped up. Nice little roll out on the outside. Everybody got sucked up. They be in the defensive secondary. Locatelli, who's got great Yellow speed, just kept running his route because he knows what his quarterback can do. And it was a perfectly thrown ball and six. And you hit the nail on the head there. Knows what his quarterback can do. You have to allude to those two playing together throughout the whole season. Snap through, hold down, kick is good. So the game tied up after Bieto puts it in again. So 14 all after a big play there by Rocha. Another pick, watch this. You're gonna get some great blocks. Corbella throws a great block right there to make sure that Rocha stays on his feet. And Locatelli just continues to run a little bit of a seam, then a deep post pattern. And there's really nobody who's gonna be able to catch up to him. The closest one was Amaya from St. Francis, five, 10 yards behind him. So SC to SC, Cardinal to Cardinal, they bring the score back up. So we're now a tie with eight minutes and 51 seconds to go, 14 to 14. This is kind of how I figured this game was gonna be. Absolutely, it has been a lot built on that chemistry that we spoke about earlier in the game. But these teams have been playing pretty even so far, 14 all. And we'll see which one blinks first here. Powell is going to be back to return as Beto gets set to kick the ball off. And we'll see how the South can respond. Looks like neither team really able to grasp the momentum and hold it for a while. Let's we'll see what they're able to do with this possession. Well, what the North would like to do on this one is kick it into the end zone and not get a return. Bieto's kick is a high, beautiful kick. Caught by Powell about the goal line. And he's got a man right in his face, but he's able to go to the left side. Has a little room there. Shakes the kicker, Beto. Now he's looking for some more. Across the 35 to about the 40. On his feet and down right about the 45-yard line. Good play there by Riggs Powell. And the freight train, I guess Kurt said it best, and that's why they call him the coach. You got an idea why this kid is an exciting ball player. All county, all league. Right now, all return. Sets it up the middle, waits for the defense to commit, kicks it off to the left side. And here's the power and tenacity. Bieto's got him, forearm shiver, sends him right to the ground. Comes back, keeps his feet, looking downfield. You just have a herd of purple jerseys out there trying to tackle him, and they finally get him at the 41. Powell makes the play, but it's Cone under center on first down. Ball oh. snap is fumbled, and a little bit of a miss exchange there, and it looks like it'll be hopped back on by the South, so they'll lose a few on that one, second and about 12. Fabian Serrano, little double handoff, does not, gets it off his back hip, but he's got the presence of mind to not panic and just fall on the ball. Good young running back out of Watsonville. I tell you, it's so important, J.D., to stiff it you know, right in the solar plexus. Cohen takes the snap, looks left, he'll throw that way. Ball is going to be caught, and across midfield with that reception is De Los Santos. He'll be right around the first down marker. Looks like they'll mark him a little short, though. Third and some inches. There you go. Mustang to Mustang. Cohen, De Los Santos, catches the ball, brings it in. I mean, this guy's got the basics down. Good fundamentals on the receiver, nice fundamentals on the passer, too. Nice throw ball, throw it high, right where the receiver can get his hands up and on the ball. So it's third and one. Powell will get the give, runs to the outside, gets a great block to seal him. He'll have the first down and more deep into Northern Territory across the 45 yard line is Riggs Powell, the first down there. But he was able to get a great seal block on the edge there as he turned that corner and turned this into some yards. Yeah, watch this. Fake the dive. There's a block right inside. Then it's just his speed. McClure, number 28, out of Scotts Valley, finally has got to speed and angle to run him out of bounds. There was good pursuit. But power, not only is he big and strong, but he's fast. Remaining in the first half. Cohen comes back under center, working out of a split formation. Takes a snap, and that ball's going right back into his face. It's going to be said the ball was coming forward, so incomplete pass, but great penetration there by number 77, Folkless. He makes a great play. 
Vogelquist just comes right up the middle. Cohen says, I'm going to pass it right. No, you're not, says Vogelquist. I like that. You know, one hop, my day, that's 75 points. No, that's a different sport. I'm sorry. That's that's 500. You know, baseball, football, they, there's some, some similarities there somewhere. I just have to dig for it now. But just a good job coming right up the middle by 077. Cohen under center again. Two black, two back splits either side of him. Gets the snap, spins to his right. Looks downfield, he'll have a man over That's gonna be Cox. And it looks like we might have a little bit of a tough collision there as that was a hard tackle, but reception will stand. Capurro brings about third and two. Tough tackle there though. Robert Schultz, number three. Nice job, good fake. Nice little roll, just a little waggle out there. There's Schultz going low, takes his knees right out from underneath him. And Capurro does a small shoulder headstand. Everybody's gonna, Schultz is going off to the far sideline. He was shaking up on the play, but that's just nice football. Clean hit though, Schultz going low for the knees, but stands as a third and two ball placed at about the 37 yard line. Cohen under center will give the handoff and getting the first down is gonna be the south and that was a good, Tough piece of running there by Rondas. I'd say, JD, I, I've said it before, some of these players have had a couple of weeks off. They've got most of the cobwebs knocked out of them. But it's, it's a pretty good football game by both of these. Good execution, percent. great use of the fundamentals, which tells me one thing. You've got the two coaches, Coach Morris and Coach Reese, North and South Coach, respectively, with their staffs. They do a good job instilling the fundamentals in their programs, as do all the other coaches at the schools here in Santa Cruz County. And we'll get a whistle here before this one gets off. Time out taken by the South. That'll be the first time out. So with about 6.20 remaining, 14 all, and the sixth annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl is presented by the Santa Cruz Host Lions Club. All proceeds from the game benefit programs supporting hearing and sight conservation, as well as on the development of our community's youth. Find out more at the SantaCruzLions.org. That's again, SantaCruzLions.org. Yeah, this is a great organization that picked up the ball and, and realized that this was gonna be a very fun event and very special. There's a, I like that, Lions Bowl, nice job. For all of these seniors who get to play one more high school football game in front of their friends, parents, anybody. And here at Cabrillo College at Carl Conley Stadium, it's very nice. And Dale Murray, the athletic director. Bill Garrison, their football coach, so we're in his office. Very nice to the sheriff. First down, Cohen goes over the middle, deep for Deitch, and that one incomplete, now unable to hook up again. Good coverage there by the Northern backfielders. They had that one well scouted. McClure back there, and just in the nick of time. We'll roll him out, and you can see he's going right after Austin. Austin's got him beat. Ball underthrown just a little bit. Deitch could have come back for the ball, but I'll tell you, J.D., when you're running a deep slant pattern, hitting the brakes and coming back is not exactly the easiest thing to do. But having the ball under thrown allowed McClure to get his hand up and knock the ball away. Powell under center out of the I formation. He'll toss to Dice. Dice has got a blocker out in front of him. And he will be brought down short of the first down marker. Dice unable to turn the corners that successfully, but pulled, picks up about six yards, third and four. Travis Dalton, 21 on the tackle. Good job by the offensive line and nice bit of trickery all the way on through. I have to really give that offensive front a lot of credit for what they were doing. Trevor McLaren, number 73 here on this side. The all Aptos offense on the field. Powell give up the middle. It's gonna be an easy first down for the South. Is there a great running room there for Rojas. He brings it into the red zone. Good run by him. It'll be a first down as again, the South reverting back to that all Aptos front in short yardage situations. I'll tell you one thing, they just run what they run best, which is 
that wing, well, they can't run a wing tee per se. They can run motion. Again, some of the special rules is you have to have a two-man backfield. So two running backs have got to be back there and three, two receivers. Give up the middle. Inside hand off the A few yards there. So Rojas took that one inside. It'll be about second and seven as he brings it just across the 15. Brent Thiebaud, number 40 from Santa Cruz in on that tackle. You can see him right there. Timeout. Another timeout Look at on a the timeout. Field. This, this one time by the North with just over five minutes to play. So 5.04 left, 14 all is the score. The score is tied at 14. The North. And some DVD sales for copies are available. $25, learn how to buy them at communitytv.org slash dubs. Or for more information, give us a call at 831-425-8848. Again, a great copy of this game. Bring home these cherished memories that these kids are out here trying to make. And of course, if you want other DVD copies of some of the other great games that CTV has done throughout the football season, you can do that also. We had some great ones. We had the uh, basketball game at Aptos that scored between Aptos and Soquel. It seemed like it was never going to end. 65 points were scored by the Mariners in a fabulous made-for-TV football game. So it stands at second and six. Ball marked at the 14. So we're going to come out of the timeout in just a moment. Now we do break the huddle. Powell under center. He's got two men in the backfield. Dage out wide to the right. Fake on the roll right. He's going to keep it himself across the 10. Shakes the tackle into the end zone. Touchdown. And another hard piece of running by who my color commentator Kurt Edwards has so aptly called the free train. He is that one. You watch him come across that corner. Biedo was the only corner on this side. And you got Riggs coming in. Watch this. Really not much, but he does have both hands on the ball. He usually is looking downfield. But look at the escort. Rojas down there to throw a block. Doesn't have to as Powell just bulls his way right on in. Fabian Serrano, 62, number 32, at the point after touchdown. of big, out of the hold of number 13, coming right at it. Taylor Cohen. And, and who we got, Bieto's a buck 70, so 30 pound difference. Good snap, kick is kick away, is and that'll be good. good. So the South, again back on top, 21-14, seeing if the North can the North answer North again North. in this situation with about 4.57 left to play. And looking at, again, a well-designed play, Powell with the fake, and leaving that corner, Bieto here on an island, making him make a choice between whether to cover his receiver or come up for the quarterback. And by the time he does, Powell just forearm shivers him into the end zone. Well, you look at the quarterbacks that are in the NFL today and some of those that are, that are in the collegiate, if you've got the ability to roll and that fear of running, those defensive backs have got to stay with those receivers. If they come up, boom, the pass goes over the top. If they stay back, these quarterbacks will cut it up and then they'll pick up 5, 10, 15 yards. Uh, and that's that's sort of the quarterback of the future. Mm. You know, Steve Young was sort of, well, I can go back to my days because I'm ancient. Fran Tarkington was way back up the other day, by the way. Kick off, and that one will bounce around the 10-yard line. Finally, feed it by the from the Passanisi will make a break to the right, cuts back to the left, and finally gets dragged down across the 20-yard line. Pretty acrobatic piece of running, but only nets them some decent field positions. First and 10. Pass and easy. Let's see he's going to be. This is a hard one. The fact that he didn't get his knee on the ground is great, because if he does, he's down back there at about the three-yard line. Now he's got to do a lot of dance steps to get himself up past the 20-yard line. You can see, you can see how quick the South was able to get down the field and cover that kick. So here we go, first and 10 from the 21. Rocha sends Locatelli motion will give to him as he's brought down after gaining about three yard lines in the, in the heart of that Southern offense. And it'll be about second and seven. The clock continues to roll here deep in the second quarter. Michael Strom in on that tackle, doing a nice job. I'd say a lot of versatility with these athletes. Most of these seniors you see out there, some of them are starters. Some of them are that second level player that may be the backup running back to one of the stars who's actually still in this game. So different levels, but all play with tenacity and heart. And all giving us a great game here today that we're proud to bring to you. Second and seven. Rocha 
flips outside to Corbella. He's got some room in a convoy in front of him, but good play there by the Southern defense to bring him down as he just barely gets across the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it a gain of two for now. Strom again, number 89 in on that tackle. Six foot 480, but Corbella does a nice job. He just, he's a tough runner. I just like the way Corbella really goes. And I also have to compliment that off the, uh, I was going to say the Aptos defense, but I'm looking out there and I'm going one, two, three, four. There are five Aptos hats out there, and an Aptos guy got him. Cabrillo's an Aptos, I realize that, but good job by the South defense. So it's third and four. It's the North wanting to make a first down here. See what Rocha has. He comes out split left, eye formation. Locatelli in motion. Got some movement across the line. Now finally we'll see a flag as well, there was a few different people moved. There was an encroachment, and then a long stall, and then finally. Well, it's all about the last guy to do it, not the first guy right in. For the play, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. And that just seems to be the last guy getting caught was the Northern offense. And there's a third and manageable four turns into a third and nine on a big play here as North trying to get something going before halftime. Doug Morris, the head man for San Lorenzo Valley. Yeah, folks, that is, that's Coach Morris. Believe me, he looks 20 years younger now that he shaved his beard off. Rocha. They card him now. Rocha on the side of Corbella. Misses his block, and Rocha has all kinds of pressure. Finally flips it out to Corbella on the left side, and he'll get a few yards back to maybe the original line of scrimmage. Great play there by Holbert, who made one of the initial hits, and we'll have about a fourth and nine as the South, it'll make a big stop. Rocha going back, looking downfield, and there's a jailbreak. Strom's got him wrapped up. This an excellent job by Rocha to keep his right arm free and just shovel pass it out to Corbella to get him down the field and just to get back up a little bit past the original line of scrimmage. And that's just good senior composure and just very heads up football by the young man. Probably one of the more unorthodox two yard plays we've seen here today. Timeout called. We'll listen to Coach Reese here in this huddle. He does you know he's a man of few words. If you not have not yet Coach Reese been picked up this program from Monta Vista's done a great job of rebuilding it, getting up to a very, very high caliber level and competing heavily in the Monterey Bay League. They finished five and one. So it'll be fourth and about nine here as everything seems like it'll be a punt and you have to expect that's what's coming. Bieto is play, and back deep in the second quarter, waiting to snap. Fourth and nine and the North is in punt formation. A whistle blow, and and penalty marker prior off. to the snap. It's Bieto actually had a pretty good kick on the way. I like those practice punts, but I got a feeling judging from where the either too many men on the field or time. Illegal defensive substitution. That's we're going to get the call there. So Substitution infraction on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So we go back to about a fourth and four, and oh, there was 13. still imagine we'll see a punt here. But now I know why the South is up. They play with a man or two more. Sneaky. They all look the same in the white jerseys. Good snap. And his kick is end over end. That'll bounce right about the 45 yard line. At the 45 he has to let it go. It'll give a nice North northern roll, roll and out of, bounds out of bounds right around the 23 yard line. And 24 is will the market. So the South will take over there. And let's see what they're able to do if the freight train has one last run in the end zone left to him. 222 left. 21 14 is your score. And it will indeed be Powell coming out under center. And as, after he's gotten everything going, we've not seen too much of Cone. And we'll see what they're able to do here, managing both of these quarterbacks. But the South, riding that freight train that is Powell and using all of those Aptos sets have been pretty productive here in this first half. They've done that one, but I'm pretty certain we're going to see Cone back in there. But it's an all Aptos one more time. The counter. Give up the middle and still on his feet just across the first down marker. Good run there. Marked down right about the 35. 
is going to be number three First down for the South. to Stout. And he had a nice little run there. He had a great room to work with. Yeah, nice little inside reverse. Reavy, number 78 from San Lorenzo Valley, doing a good job of continuing to pursue. That's what you tell of your lineman. Pursue, pursue. First down, handoff give is up the middle, and Powell is going to keep it himself, actually, as he kind of fools everybody with that one. He's done that a few times today. He'll get across the 45-yard line, close to the marker. No signal yet from the official, so we'll say second and one. Well, the initial fake was to big number 42, Rojas, one of the big backs in that Aptos offense. And Powell just rides that for as long as he can. Then he just takes it around the right side. See how quick they come up? All Aptos. Here we go again. Second and one. Powell, two backs behind him, fakes a handoff. Now rolling out to his right, looking for a throw. And he's got it down the left side. Dage with that breakaway speed. He's going to make it in. Touchdown south. Flag thrown, though. We'll see what the call is at the end. But touchdown on another well-designed play. Powell doing it no matter which side he rolls to and able to burn the north again. We'll wait for the official call, but a well-designed play there. And if you're Coach Reese, you got to be feeling pretty happy about yourself right now. Well, you're happy in that play went off very well. Deitch did a nice job of continuing to run his route. Down like unsportsmanlike conduct going to go against the south. Probably excessive celebration. Yeah, you have to kind of Diets there at the end and kind of jump into the end zone. It's probably what the call is on. After the score, on sportsmanlike conduct, on the offense, 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown counts. You have to think that's what the call is. I mean, that flag came out pretty much as soon as he crossed the goal line. So Yeah, he did a uh, little bit too much. You know, it's, everybody says, act like you've been there. Believe me, Austin's been there a whole bunch of times this year. Kick is up and it is good in the south now. Two score lead after another impressive play by Riggs Powell. Getting it done through the air. And you see Powell, great fake, rolling to his left, stopping and Dietz there getting behind the defense. And as soon as he got the ball in his hands, nobody was gonna catch him, Kurt. Well, you've got, you've got to understand what this is all about. There's your little excessive celebration you're going in. It's an all-star game and you've been playing with it against these players, you want to make sure that you're cool out there, but you don't want to show anybody up at any point in time. One more left. Beautiful ball. Nice throw right over the shoulders. Austin just streaks down the sideline. Bieto trying to come up and catch him as best he can. But there goes back to the power of the quarterback who can throw it, which Powell can do. And he's really improved in his arm in his throwing game and also is able to run it. Now you'd also take it to that Offensive front, big offensive front that's doing a nice job of getting the wall, fake a couple of runs, linebackers come up, if the defensive backs read run, and you pull it, and your receivers continue to run the positive route, touchdown can happen, and it did. So we'll await the kickoff from the Southern team. We should see some pretty good field position for the North as this kick end over end. Fielded by Lucas Kelly right in front of the 20. He'll take it up the middle, now moving outside to the right, getting, again, that good field position we expected right around the 45-yard line. First and 10 for the North. And we'll see what Coach Morris is going to choose to do here about a minute in 20 left, minute 18, he's got the option whether or not he wants to try to take some shots downfield or if he wants to kind of go into half and regroup at this point. You have to imagine he's going to go for some points. Oh, he's going to go for some points. I mean, he's got his entire coaching staff in there. You you saw what Rocha can do. He's able to run the ball. He hit Locatelli on that deep touchdown the last time through. And, you know, the South has put up 21 points here in the second half. And he's got good running backs and good receivers. It's just a question of how they click. Rocha, quick drop, throw out to the left, over the head of Locatelli there, second down though. There's those two unable to hook up on that play. Yeah, Rocha did have some company in his backfield. There's little doubt about that one as Eric Griffith, number 14 for Monta Vista Christian, was applying a little bit of pressure on the young quarterback. So. If you're looking at both lines, offense and defense, the defensive side for the South has done a nice job of being able to penetrate and get into that offensive backfield of the North. So second and 10. Rocha 
takes the snap. Flushed out to his left, he'll throw it now. And that's gonna be run and taken down by a gangle of defenders there is number 45, third down and six. As Benko had nowhere to go, pretty much after getting that ball, he was swarmed by the defense. He did a good job of making it, doing something out of not much. Amaya, number 31, one of the three or four tacklers that was in there to get hold of Benko. So it's third down, Rocha will come back under center with a split eye. Rolling right, now he'll stop, looks to keep it himself, and he is gonna be flushed out, ball loose, Corbella tries to jump on it, looks like he got there. Fourth down. Pardon me, Rocha back to pass. Is Timeout will be called by Coach Reese. By Corbella. Yeah, I've got to give credit to number 52, and that's Connor Bausch for Monta Vista, six foot, 272 pounder. Does a nice job of rushing. Now, the, you cannot blitz up the middle in this game. So the linebackers, middle linebackers, they can't come up the pipe. So you know, essentially, quarterback realizes if there's a blitz going to happen, that uh, it's going to come off the corners. Linebackers or something's going to come off the corners. But what Bausch did a nice job. He was pushing, did a nice little spin move to try and avoid the blocker in front of him. And he also allowed the other left side portion of the defense to continue to work it up. But essentially, I'll call that as sort of a coverage sack slash fumble because great job downfield by the defensive secondary. Vieto back to punt here. Gets a good snap, kick, kind of a short one as it will sail out of bounds and we'll see where they mark it. Ball flies out over on the right side. And it looks like the spot is gonna be right around the 50 yard line. JD, you know, I, I've got to wonder, you've been around the block not as many times as I have, but you've been around the block. All season long, kickers and everybody else have live ammunition coming at him. They're, they're coming on through. This is a cheerleader running for cover. Nice job by the coach to protect her. Not very well, but he, at least he offered a paw. Nobody's coming. I mean, these kickers are sitting, catch the ball, 1,001, 1,002. Well, I might as well kick the darn thing. And Bieto is a great kicker. just had a hard time kicking it. He has indeed today as the South and up shop right on the 50-yard line. Kona in the center now. He will look to run to his right, and he's going to get about a yard after he's brought down. And he had some pursuit all over him as Hernandez is in on that tackle. He gets about one, though. Second and nine. Kona looking downfield the whole way. Makes yep. you think that maybe Coach Reese is going to take one more shot before half. Well, I would. You want to put as many points on the board as you can, and I like... The fact that Cohen continued to have his eyes up, looking downfield. Great job defensively by the North, staying with their receivers. That was just a good defensive series. And take the last play of the half, a bobbled snap. Cohen stepping up, airs it out to his left. Dates with the reception, but that is a beautiful 25-yard pass, but it won't do anything there. So we will head into the half shortly, 28-14, as the South able to get some things going behind the great offense of Riggs Powell and using all those Aptos sets they're able to get some great offense here and put them up two scores. They did a good job. You start off in the first quarter with 7-7 coming out of that one. It looked pretty even. It was even 14 and 14 at one point in time but then Powell decided to take over offensively with his running and throwing capability and just started to change that and get everybody get going to do 28 to 14 where we are right now. Again, numbers are huge. You know, the North is here with about 35 or so players. And the South, they've got 60 some odd players out here. Doug Morris has done a good job. He's had these kids for about a week to get used to them. He has one quarterback, so he can't really rotate the two quarterbacks through it very well. And we've got uh, down there on the sideline, We've got Kelsey, as you can see our score, 28 to 14. Kelsey's down there with Coach Doug Morris. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Morris. Coach, you guys are down 28-14 going into the second. How are you going to pick up the momentum and adjust going into the second? Well, we're just going to keep on going, doing what we're doing, having fun. The boys are out there uh, playing Aptos out there. It's kind of like deja vu all over again. They've 
all those Aptos helmets all at once is, is uh, hard to deal with, but we're, playing, we're, we're, we're holding in there, hanging in there, uh, the underdogs, and uh, we'll come up for the second half. Talk a little bit about the motivation that it takes to bring a team together like this team in particular. You have players that have been playing against each other their entire high school career. It's hard to get them together and get them to play with each other instead of against each other. It's the easiest thing on earth. These kids are so great. I mean, that's one of the greatest things about this week is these kids. They're, every single one of them is a gem and, and just a pleasure to coach it. Uh, they don't need to be motivated. They're football players. And they just love the game, and you know it, it, it's it's fun. Great coach, good luck. Thank you very much. Score at the half, 28-14. Welcome back to the 6th Annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl. The score at half, the South up 28-14. to I'm J.D. Hatton, alongside Kurt Edwards. But before we get back to the game, we'd like to bring you some messages from our sponsors. This presentation is made possible by Santa Cruz Diner. At Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great stuff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz or on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, priced right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And Watsonville Tires. Happy holidays from Watsonville Tire and Lube, where you'll find reliable customer service at respectable prices. In Watsonville at 127 Lee Road, just north of Beach Street. Offering discount tire sales and repairs for semi-trucks, autos, SUVs, and tractor tires. Great savings on all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at Watsonville Tire and Lube. If it's got wheels, Watson and Watsonville Tires has got you covered. Buy Upper Crust Pizza. Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operates since 1979, Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials on every Tuesday as all you can eat, dine in, or take out. Visit them on the web at uppercrustseed.com or call 423-9010. Upper Crust, authentic Sicilian square pizza is our specialty. Also buy Independent Rentals. Independent offers rental trucks, vans, and trailers. Customer satisfaction is very important at Independent Rentals, and they prove it every day. Rent local, rent independent. Online at independentrentalco.com. And before... We're going to turn it right down now to Kelsey Olson, who's down there with South Coach David Reese. Kelsey? Thanks, guys. I am here with South Coach Reese. You guys are looking pretty good. 28-14 lead going into the half. Tell me, how are you going to keep the guys motivated with a lead like that? I don't think it would be hard in an all-star game. All the guys are waiting to get in. They're used to A lot of these guys used to going to both ways, so just going half a, one way and not even the whole, whole time doing that, they're, they're ready to play some more. So. This is the last game of their high school career, their last shot at a win. What did you tell them in the locker room? You know, just keep plugging away with what they're doing. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the moment. This is a special, you know, special opportunity for these guys, and it's great that they're getting to have one more shot at it before they do in their high school career. Well, thank you, Coach, and have a great game. Good luck. All right, thank you very much. Back up to the booth. Thank you, Kelsey. If you're just tuning in, this has been a terrific game so far. Again, 28-14 is your score. And let's take a look at some first half highlights. The first one, Riggs Powell on a bootleg to his left, completes a deep pass to Austin Dates. This one goes for quite the length of the field as it sets up a Powell, then scamper into the end zone for the first score of the game. As he's able to get there, 7-0. South had it almost all going their way as they stuff Corbella on the goal line there as the North coming back. But Joe Rocha, the quarterback there, able to get in, tying the game up at 7-7. South comes back with Powell on a little handoff there to DeStout, bringing in the 14-7, but North coming right back. Rocha to his teammate Locatelli on the deep ball down the left side, tying the game up at 14. Since then, though, it's been all South, led by Riggs Powell. This one on a bootleg to the right, a 14-yard run. Emphatic way to go into the end zone with the forearm shiver over Bieto. And then he can do it with his legs, he can do it with his arm too, folks, as Powell down the left side finding Deitch into the end zone there. Another connection, that brings you your score 28-14 as you see Deitch having a little bit of fun, a little excessive celebration there, but bringing you to the score of the game so far. So 
some terrific play there by both sides of the field, and this looks to be an exciting one here as we continue the second half. We have captains meeting at the half. And we're going to lead you now with some footage of halftime entertainment. Santa Cruz Pop Warners, we got a great play here. They were able to bring us some great action here out in halftime, and you can see maybe some future stars here who hopefully will be playing in this game one day. Good possibility. I'm sure they're looking out and seeing some of their heroes getting warmed up here, getting ready for the second half. And as we speed dial down, there's Dave Reese. He's very comfortable. Of course, he's got his coaching staff working with him. And the South bringing 23 Aptos players, and they've run offense Aptos a couple different times throughout the game, and those have gone from big scores. And on the other side, Doug Morris, the clean-shaven Doug Morris, who now gets carded when he goes into any restaurant, asks for a glass of wine. He's been he's getting helped by the Santa, his San Lorenzo Valley High School coaching staff, and both gentlemen class acts. Both gentlemen tremendously respected by their fellow coaches here in the, in the Santa Cruz County. And, you know, it's a lot of fun to be at all-star games here. At Santa Cruz hosts Lions Bowl, number six for them. We were here last year for number five in the pouring rain. Well, I wasn't, but CTV was in the absolute pouring rain and everybody diving for cover. Absolutely gorgeous night out there. The players are having a good time. Coaches said they all had a great week, week of practice and built some new camaraderie and some new friendships, which is great. Absolutely. And Reese, speaking about that numerous times in Keys game, also emphasized that everyone will play. Reese has been true to that. We've seen numerous people out here from that large South roster that he has. But when in doubt and short yard situations, he's been going to his all Apto sets and to his quarterback in Powell but we'll see what they're able to do now. Up two scores, and we're about to get ready. The South again receives, so they will kick off to the North, and if you're Coach Morris, you want to see a score out of the gates early here to get something going, and you got the great running back back there in Corbella who can hopefully get a spark. Second half underway with a line drive kick fielded at about the 12-yard line. Corbella up the middle now, has a little room, He'll cross the 35 and be wrapped up not much further after that. So a good return there. Nice starting field position for the North who want to fight their way back in this one. Down two scores. Well, J.D., you're, you're very correct. You want to get off the dime and score, and score very quickly. Then turn that over to your defense which has had a tough time going to get, and I don't blame that defense having a tough time. They've got great defensive players, but when Team Aptos steps out there, they've been playing as a unit the entire season with Rocha back out there at quarterback. Rocha now, man in motion, and we'll get a flag to start the half, so not the way you'd like to start. Potentially for Coach Morris, we'll see what the call is. And it's gonna be an illegal sub there, so I actually stand corrected. I'm sure he'll take the free yards just to start off. Play, substitution in defense, five yard penalty, still first down. Not an unusual penalty as far as all-star games are concerned. You, you've, you've got a set group, but as soon as you start moving players in and out and rotating in and out. Now, Riggs Powell, who's been a demon on offense, is now out there on the defense. He's a safety here on the near side. Ball will be a flea flicker. Rocha looking downfield, has a man here on the right side. Locatelli makes the catch, gets a great block, and he's going to go untouched, flag thrown around the 20 as number 45 for the Northern squad there. Benko absolutely laid out his defender. There may be some penalties with that block there, but let's wait to hear the official call from the referees. Well, Benko threw a great block, but unfortunately he threw it before the ball was caught. So you're going to have offensive pass interference. Great call, great execution, just a little premature on the block by big number four. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot, still first down. But I like that one. You watch Locatelli come out of the backfield last, send everybody deep. You got your little razzle-dazzle back there. As we have Locatelli it up here on the is now, replay. he's already handed it off. So he's already working down the sidelines. And there's the hit, and the ball had not gotten into number five's hands. So very costly mistake by the North squad because they'd have been in, instead of first in two phone calls and both of them long distance to get a first down. 
I think they, they've got to back that puppy up. I think you can see a few of the hair starting to grow in again on Coach Morris's beard after that one. Bringing out his trick play to start the half, trying to get a score and going in the wrong direction. So now the North will set up shop at about the 27-yard line. Rocher remains under center, split eye to the right side. Locatelli here on the near side now goes in motion. Snap to Rocha. Looks like it's going to be him running to the outside, and he'll jump over one defender. Ball out, and they come out of bounds, flag down. And tons of confusion on that play. Looks like we're going to have a hold. It'll be interesting to see if Coach Reese will move him back even more or just take the lack of down. I'd back him up. I would back him up strictly because special teams-wise, you want him to kick, and you want to try and get the ball as close to the 50 as you possibly can. But this is going to go from the end of the round. On the offense. A penalty is declined. Third down. Coach Reese, you've got a kinder heart than I have. And he will leave it there. So misplay from the get-go. So running back wasn't there. So Roach is going to run for his life. There, as you see, you're right. The ball is spit out. But there was a holding call back behind the line of scrimmage. It looked like Garcia might have got his hands caught in the cookie jar or somebody's uniform. So the North moving in the wrong direction here. And we will see Corbella under center as he approaches to in the shotgun. So almost a three backfield set. Wildcat here, ball under. And that handoff will go and getting a hit at about the 30 is going to be the running back carrying the ball and tough play there. Interesting call to go for that on 4th and 15. Bring it out of the Wildcat. Not really much happening there. We'll see a punt. Now Passanisi who is a man in motion. You got a lot of great running backs. Bring Passanisi in motion figuring they won't be looking for the motion man. He did pick up a pretty good chunky yards but not nearly enough and you're right JD. He got whacked right as he was crossing the line of scrimmage. So Beto to kick again. High snap this time. Gets the ball down. This one a nice spiral kick. Two fair catches called. And ball will hit a northern defender in the back. Roll on over to the right side. And that'll finally be down at about the 40-yard line by, Ron, by um, excuse me, that'll be down by Dalton. So first and 10, South has another great field position and another chance to get the ball rolling here early and often. Now, now it's going to be an interesting amount. It looks like, I'm trying to see who's back out there. Cohen's back out at quarterback for the South team. We're just waiting for them to put the football. You know, wave that flag away. going to be picked up and waved off. So it's going to be first down for the South. Cohen under center. Powell, though, in the huddle as well. Taylor Cohen. And as we said before, he's an outstanding athlete. You can put him out as wide receiver if you want to. You can put him in as a halfback as you want to. And that's what they're going to do as a wide receiver in the I formation set first down on the 41. Cones give up the middle, making some nice moves and crossing midfield with the first down. Good run there by Holbert. Flag comes down. Ball comes out. North says they have it. Cone will make the tackle. Right across the 45 yard line, Holbert down. And we're gonna get some confusion. Let's wait to see what the call is from the referees. Capuro is talking to one official, pleading a case. Two refs are meeting. What's the official call gonna be here? I don't know, but Holbert is hoping that it's not that. We've got a huddle on the 50. Holbert. Good, strong run. Clearly had the first, fighting for extra yardage. And the call on the field currently is a fumble. The North is uh, said, we've got it. And let's see what the call is of the referees break their huddle. Okay. Get a personal foul against the South. No word yet on the fumble rule. Personal ruling. foul on White. That penalty's declined. Result of the play, first down. Do you officially have the ball, so... Let's look at it again. Holbert running up the left side. They're just hanging on to him. Has a man on him, and finally there. It might have been a little late, but ball comes out. Scramble for it, and interesting call there by the officials there 
on that one, Kurt. Feeball was the one who ended up ripping the ball away from Holbert. It looked like Holbert might have been down, but it's you know it's a call of the official and one of the things in high school. There's no instant replay, folks. You Notes. can see it here. Make the call for yourself. But as far as the south is, or the north is concerned, they got it right. So they get another chance at life here. Rocha will give the, on the Locatelli reverse around though and fighting his way first some extra yards and finally being brought down. Great play there by Travis Langley. As he gets about six. Yeah, haven't really called Langley's number much. A fine receiver, multiple use player for Harbor. And you can see him coming around the corner looking for any kind of hole. A couple of missed tackles as he tries to work his way right on up there. One of the hits in there, Andrew Leon from St. Francis, number 49. Langley was a huge part of the, the Harbor offense and defense this year. We haven't seen that number called too often, but that time it was, picked up about six. Ball at the 38, Rocha under center again. Locatelli here on the near side. Sends him in motion. On second down, Rocha will toss left to Corbella. His first carry of the half, and Corbella will get across that first down marker and deep into territory, and he will be right around the 25-yard line. Good, strong run from, again, someone who we've called numerous times a very solid downfield runner. He's able to produce every time he gets the ball. Yeah, it looked like Eric Lopez, number 68, just blew right across the line of scrimmage and almost disrupted that play from the start. But the, Rocha was able to get the ball away, and that's what good running backs, if they hit the hole hard, and all you need is just a little bit of it. You know, get me the shoulder pads through running downhill. Corbella does a great job of doing that. So it's first down on the 26. And the Northern offense sets up with two split backs. They give to Locatelli, he'll reverse to Langley. No, Locatelli will keep it, fakes on the reverse, and he's gonna be down right around the, the five yard line. Number five, Nick Locatelli on the fake Sacramento, reverse. Sacramento, number one, Danny was the last the line of defense. And, and a touchdown saving tackle by you're, number one, Danny You're Sacramento. right in assuming that that ball was gonna go back the other direction, by the way, but that the both of these clubs like to run a lot of misdirection. And he's showing it out there to everybody, to Langley, he's gonna take it, but he did. It was a great read, got a nice block on the corner and down there. And the, and the young defensive back, Danny Saparito out of Monta Vista, did a nice job of a good open field tackle. So it's first and goal now, as the North is knocking on the door, shift their offense now, three backs in the backfield. Rocha give to Corbella, and he'll get about a yard there. The handoff up the middle, the number Second down now at about the six yard line. Corbella picks up maybe a yard on the play. It'll be interesting to see if they go back to Corbella, who was unable to get in the first time they're in this situation, but has been running very well for most of the day. He's doing a good job. Little play action is always really good through here. He had a three-man backfield, so you send both right up in there, try and soften up that underbelly, but a nice job by the linebackers to come up. Capullo, number five, one of the ones that came up, did a nice job of making the hit, as well as Takar, number 28. Second and seven. Man in motion, Rocha. Bring trips to the, swings to the right side. Ball give up the middle and almost in down around the three yard line is Winkle. So Alex Benko does a nice job, number 45. And you see there, JD comes in, does a nice job of reading the blocks. Good penetration to that second level. There's Doug Morris off to the sides going, fellas. I'd like to see a touchdown. We're only three yards away. If you're, if you're Coach Doug Morris, I think you're happy thing, and this is two down territory here. Definitely. Third and yeah, goal you're not going to settle. At this point three. in time, you're down 14. I mean, yes, you could settle for a field goal, but you know, why? So it's third and three. Rocher split backs again, sends a man in motion. Man motion back, he'll take the hand up, give to Corbella, off the right tackle, and he's gonna try to spin his way just short. Roach is signaling he's in. No word yet from the official. The handoff to number 26. They're gonna call fourth down. So I'm impressed they finished the play without his helmet. One yard line. Somebody Once got in there and tried to do a, a corkscrew job on his head. So you see the tenacity and the blocking up front, good sealing out, but also great Where's penetration from, from the, the outside. Stars. Saparito does a nice job of coming on in. That forces Corbello to turn it up, and you can see that he had linebackers and everybody else coming up right in front of him. So nice job for the corner. Contain, 
which he did, and then force, force the play back inside. So just as we expected, it's fourth down. Last time in the situation, it was Rocha on a keeper. Let's see what happens here as he comes under center. Ball, and he will indeed keep it, and he looks like he did not get there. No signal from the official yet. They're going to call him down. Tenacious play from the Southern defense. Let's take a look at it again on the Watch replay. Cody Capuro, number five, linebacker position. Now remember, folks, you may not block from your middle linebacker position, so you have to wait for the play to go. Good job by the defense getting able to submarine underneath the offense, allowing the linebackers to step up, fill the gaps, and stop Roche really before he could go anywhere. So with about six left to play, the South are successful with a goal line stand here early in the third. And Coach Morris not able to capitalize on that turnover. And let's see what the South does with the ball deep in their own territory. Cones give up the middle. And that's going to go for about a few yards there as we get a few hits close to the whistle. Here comes Team Aptos onto the field. But they're just looking for some kind of an operating room. So you send your big fullback right up the middle. He pushes the pile. He gets up about to the three-yard line. And, you know, you just watch all these players, J.P. Holbert, 200-pound fullback. I, you know, a lot of these guys, I'd like to see them come here to Cabrillo. And that's going to be a handoff to the right side, close to the first down marker on that play by the South, giving themselves even more breathing room. And let's see what happens as now Team Aptos looks like they'll be heading out. And they'll mark it as a first, so first down. Good run there. You notice on that play, just a little misdirection. Give it, fake the dive, a little cross buck action, if you will, is come to the left side from your back. Then you just ride that as long as you can, read the linebackers, kick it out to the outside. Kona gives to his running back, who's stuffed behind the line. Whistle blown, he was able to break free there, but it looks like they're gonna call him down, so we'll see where the spot is. But unable to get anything going there on that running play is Serrano, and great penetration there by the Northern defensive line, able to grab him and push him back. Good job, you can see the whistle is blowing, and Serrano does fight his way free. That's one thing as far as Second officials and 11 concerned, JD, is when do you blow the whistle? Once you see momentum stop, fighting stop, when do you blow that whistle? Absolutely, we've seen that call a few times. There's a notable Super Bowl that makes me think of New York Giants that had that call. But on second down here, roll out to the right, and that's going to be caught and finally tackled down over on the right side of the field. And the ball looks like it came out again. It's going to be the call. Yep. I'll tell you one thing, you just got a lot of pushing and shoving. The ball might have come out. It was a nice little play to Kapoor who caught the ball. And then some extracurricular activity. Don't see a flag on the play over there. But I know one thing, Coach Morris will be talking to his guys saying, it's football. Let's take a look on the... Nice little fake on the here. inside dive. Good roll, Kapuro. Bieto trying to hang on it, but Kapuro really doing a good job of just hanging with it. And then there's just this late hit on a block. A little bit of exuberance, if you will. Over that fire coming out, both teams want to show pride for... Of course. So on third down, Cohn gets a snap, and his handoff will go, and that's going to go absolutely nowhere. Great stop there by the Northern defense. Ian Reavy from San Lorenzo Valley, number seven, six, I'll get 68, doing a nice job. So he's going to come right at you, watch 68. 78, I'm sorry, makes that first hit. And then you've got 66, Javier Valdez coming in from Soquel to help finish it off. Both players pretty much in the backfield as soon as the ball was delivered. So the North winning the field position battle for the third quarter. And we'll see a punt here from the South. Locatelli and Corbella back to receive. Snap down, kick is on the way. Nice spiraling kick, it'll bounce right around the 50. And Locatelli is trying to signal that it hit a player. As the down will officially come at the 33. Yep, the, one of the officials does have it. Locatelli's way, saying, we would like it on the 49 in their territory, and he's gonna get it. So good eyes by him, I guess that's why he's back there to field those punts. 
Here's the kick a by Saparito. Puts it up in there. This is one thing, if you're not paying attention, and you may end up getting run into the bike. So it ends up hitting, wish I could see his number, but he ended up hitting one of the coverage coverage guys that are going downfield, but you've got to be, ta be paying attention when that ball comes down. Looked like it might have been Leon that might have been hit by the ball. And the South will take a timeout here. So Coach Reese wanting to get his defense in line. And can't really seem to blame him, only a two score game. And now it's time for our quote of the day. You learn more character on the two yard line than anywhere else in life. Really? That coming from head coach Paul Dietzel of LSU. He coached there from 1955 to 1961. And he's giving us some interesting things about character and the very fitting quote is we just saw the Southern defense make a stand down on the two yard line right. before this play. Now let's see how much character we've learned about them. Are they able to come out and stop the North again or is coach Morris' squad gonna be able to go and get their first score after the South scoring 14 unanswered points so far? Yeah, we're getting a little conversation over there from some of the other members of the San Lorenzo Valley coaching staff, or also known as the North coaching staff. And it's always nice to come out here and you get the great fans that come out and just like to watch football games. All the, the parents from these players, the supporters, and of course the Lions themselves that have done a fantastic job of putting on this great game. Toss to Corbella on the right side. He will be brought down just across the 45 yard line. Number 67, Villanueva in on the tackle. He picks up about five yards, so second down. Hey, uh, I've said it before, I'll say it. If you can pick up this one, nice pitch. Corbella has a great opportunity now of being able to pick out where he's going to be able to rock and roll and see if he can get through. Padilla, number 22 of Pajaro, comes up and makes that tackle from his safety position. Second and four, Rocha. Long drop, now throws over the middle, completes. Hit as soon as he got the ball is Langley. Ball's gonna be marked a little short. It'll be third down two, right around the 40 yard line. Holbert with Put on the, the 41. Hit. I'm, I'm sorry, JD, stepped all over you on that one. Holbert no. with the hit on that one, and the timing couldn't have been per better. Ball is there, bam. And a nice little hit, wrap, hang on to him. Langley's got really nowhere to go. He's, Buckling at the knees, good textbook tackle. Big third down play here, time winding down the third quarter. Rocha under center, back split out to his right, tossed to Osa Corbella, running downhill. He is gonna be, that's gonna be close. Culver all over him. What's the call gonna come in from the official? It'll depend on the spot. It's gonna be a close spot. I thought Corbella might have got it, but you can see that this is an all-star game, and they're playing with fire and passion, which these coaches bring and these young men bring at the same time. Credit for the first down. Corbella has to go with equal, with all, everything that goes on. Watch Holbert, sniffing him out. Great backer, good pursuit. Drives right on through. Might have left his feet a little bit too soon, but that's getting a little bit ticky-tacky, but just a nice job by that young inside linebacker. But it stands as a first down just across the 40 yard line. Give to Locatelli on the left side. He will turn the corner, makes a spin move, gets some more yards there. Nice some acrobatic running there for about eight down at the 30. He even fired up the crowd over there on that far side. This is good. Locatelli saying, I'm running out of room. I'm running out of room. I got everybody coming. Whoop, I'm gonna spin right back around and pick up another five yards. That's just great athleticism. So a very manageable second down situation. Time running down as we'll be seeing the last plays of the third quarter here. And let's see what Coach Morris has drawn up. Rocha under center again. Two blacks split behind him. Corbella is the deep back. Langley out here to the right. Locatelli motions that way. He'll get the ball and the give. First down and some more there right around the 20 as he's able to get a nice hole running to the outside. Credit Ryan Wartman from Scotts Valley with a great block in the backfield. Here comes Locatelli. Wartman, you can see him right there, just gets one of the blocks out of the way. And then just the speed of Locatelli gets him out around the corner. Shoemake, number 72, big old Charlie out of St. Francis with the tackle. And that's a big boy coming down the field. And again, inside lineman position, pursue, pursue, try and get an angle, you may get a tackle. 
Three backs now for Rochi. This should be the last play of the quarter. Give to Corbella up the middle, and he's able to get about six or seven. Good carry by him across the 15. And you got to think that that's just the way they wanted to end the quarter here. So we're through with three. 28-14 is the score as the North driving, knocking on the door here at the end of three. I tell you, JD, fun quarter of football. Very, very fun quarter of football. Very fast one. And the sponsor for today's game, again, Santa Cruz Diner. At Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food and reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1988, 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz and on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And Watsonville Tires. Happy holidays from Watsonville Tires and Lube, where you'll find reliable customer service and respectable prices. In Watsonville, 127 Lee Road, just north of Beach Street. Offering discount tire sales and repairs, semi-trucks, autos, SUV, and tractor tires. Great savings on all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at Watsonville Tire and Lube. If it's got wheels, Watsonville Tires got you covered by Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operated since 1979. Upper Crust offers great food and great prices as we get back to the action. Ball run to the right side and Banco is going to be tackled there for a short gain. Call it a yard or two. So we start the fourth. Yeah, I watched a couple of Scott Valley games. Banco is one of those types of running backs and blocking backs that you like to have. He can lead. He's, Corbello was his primary back, and he was a great blocker. Passanisi, another one. But Banco's one of those lunch bucket, bucket types of guys that you want to have in there because he's not afraid to block. He's not afraid of short yardage. He's just, as a coach, you like to see number 45 on your team. Last time North was in this situation, they were unable to come away with any points. Rocha give. It's going to go to Locatelli. He'll keep it on the left side. He's going to be flushed out and tackled right around the 15 with forward progress. So let's see where they mark it officially. So that one going backwards. And if you're Coach Morris, I think, again, you have to be thinking you're going for this one. I'll tell you, the South had that one covered on both ends. Here's the fake back to Langley, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. And then to find out that he doesn't have the ball. Locatelli's victim of just tremendous pursuit and... Everything else is Tokar, number 28, one of the initial people in on the hit, and Kapuro, number five, from his linebacker position, comes on over. And I might as well give a shout-out to number 60, Itamura, who was taking on Langley, who didn't have the ball. So if you were supposed to have the ball, somebody was tackling you. And the North will take a timeout. We'll come back again. Upper Crust Pizza, another one of our sponsors. Upper Crust Pizza on Santa Cruz's west side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operated since 1979. Upper Crust offers night, nightly dinner specials, and every Tuesday is all you can eat, dine-in or takeout. Visit them on the web at uppercrustc.com or call 423-9010. Upper Crust, authentic Sicilian square pizza is our specialty. And also by Independent Rentals. Independent offers rental trucks, vans, and trailers. Customer satisfaction is very important at Independent Rentals, and they prove it every day. Rent local, rent independent. Online at independentrentalsco.com. It's great so to have all these wonderful sponsors here with, for this game. Absolutely, to make this broadcast possible. 28-14, again, is your score here in the fourth. It's fourth and three. Ball placed on the 15-yard line. And let's take a quick look at the CTV Sports Basketball scene that we'll be covering again. January 15th, St. Francis versus Aptos on the 29th, Harbor versus Scotts Valley. February 12th, Santa Cruz versus Sokol. What a Valentine's Day present that. And then on the 19th, the SCCAL Championship. So some great coverage here from CTV Sports coming forward. But let's get back into the action is this one. The South still out on the field. Again, a timeout taken there by the North. They came out lining up like they were going to kick a field goal. And now showing, looks like Corbella in the backfield, Rocha. Seems like they're going to go for it. A little miscommunication there, it seems to be. But let's see what happens now as they are definitely set to go for it. Fourth and three, ball on the 15. Rocha under center, single back set this time. Now his second back comes in. As remember, one of the rules of today's game, you have to have two backs in the backfield. 
Rocha under center, now comes set. There's a third back in there. Fake to Corbell, he's gonna keep it on the left side. Holbert tries to shut a block, but Rocha will get the first down, depending on the spot. He's running hard to his left, and they'll mark it there again. So first and goal on the 10, and the North has another chance to get in the end zone. Shows the tenacity that Rocha has. He's got it, he's gonna make it a little stiff arm, but the great leg drive Holbert was the first one in on the hit, but he was able to know how far he had to get to it. Nice gamble by Coach Morris and the rest of his coaching staff. And that's one of those things where you get over there and you say, fellas, what do you want to do? And I'm sure the ball players uh, said, we're going for it. Is there, is there an option here? No. Absolutely. First and 10 now. Split backs in the backfield. Toss to Corbell on the left side. He's got some room in front of him. Dances in and around the five, and he's going to be tackled short. Flag down. Looks like we might have a hold on this one. The Corbella doing a nice job of trying to read the field as you see the two officials conferring. We'll find out. We will have offensive holding. And that's one of those as a coach. I don't care if you're an all-star worth the all-stars or coaching your old team. You hate those types of penalties. Because, of course, holding off 10 yards to apply the foul, replay, first down. So, 10 yards, not an ideal situation here as it was first and goal. We'll see that hold here on the left side. Corbella running outside, just those hands outside the jersey there. Can't do that as a, as a blocker. And so, the ball moved back a little bit and We'll see what happens here with the North now in their huddle. Field a little bit longer. Remember, it was first and goal on the 10, so no first down again. First and goal from the 14. Rocha under center. Locatelli moving out to the left. Now they come set. Corbell in the backfield. And play Delay blown game. dead. We have a... Delay of game. Play a game. So the, the, North the North had a physical Digital penalty called on them, and now the more of a mental penalty called on them. But I can forgive one, the mental one. I can't forgive the holding one because you, I don't care who you are, senior, freshman, graduate student from Stanford. You know better than to do that. Yeah, no, I'm picking on Stanford. <laughs> well, I absolutely understand that, but you have to think some of that is due to these teams not really having played together before. Oh, true. Very, very true. But the fact of the matter is, it's now 19 yards to the end zone. Rocha under center. Drop back, looking to throw. Goes to the right side for the pylon, making a break on the ball. What's the call? Incomplete. Ball was intended for Langley out there on the far sideline. The North had been going short side, short side. Rocha puts the ball up, floats it out a little bit. You probably, you could have maybe had a little defensive pass interference call if you really wanted to get ticky-tacky out there. But the officials are going to say, nah, this is an all-star game, and the ball was thrown too far, so they couldn't really catch it. Absolutely. But you have to like the throw from Rocha. Safe spot on the field. He's going to say, if my guy's not catching this, nobody's catching that ball. So a safe throw. Second and 19, though. North having limited amount of time to get back into this one. 28-14 of them being down. Rocha pitch on the right to Corbella. Makes a juke inside and is absolutely stuffed. Two guys hit him in the backfield. And he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Third down. Well, credit that play for being detonated behind the line of scrimmage by J.P. Holbert, number eight, that very active linebacker who we ISOed a couple plays before. He jumps across the line of scrimmage. Benko does a block on that one, but that's delays enough for the ball carry that it allows the defense to flow over there and then really deny any kind of gain. What did he pick up? Maybe one on that play. Third down, ball on the 18, third and goal. Two wide receivers to the left for Rocha. He's got Corbella behind him, rolling that way. Throws for the end zone. And caught, back of the end zone, touchdown. Locatelli. That connection has worked a few times for the day, and what it looks like, Hope is just about run out for the North. Rocha finds Locatelli, back corner of the end zone, a beautiful throw, 28-20 now, the score. Couldn't have said it better myself, but great footwork 
Remember, folks, in high school ball, you only have to get one foot in. Locatelli was able to get both feet in. And again, it just goes to the type of quarterbacks that we're seeing here. All three of them have the capabilities of running, Rocha's being one of those. So you play a little play action pass, work that dive, that freezes some of the linebackers. And of course, you've got speed that Locatelli has as we watch Pieto get ready for the point after touchdown to try and bring it into a seven point game with eight minutes and 30 seconds to go. Pieto's kick on the way, it is good. So one score game there after a great throw by Rocha. That connection, Rocha Locatelli has been working for most of the season. Works again here on this replay. Great concentration by him. Reminiscent of the Willie Mays basket catch in that one. Just finds it over the shoulder and brings it in for the touchdown. Very nicely covered Lenore. Ricky Lenore was right there on the coverage. That ball was perfectly thrown. And it was just a nice little move. Just a nice double move by Locatelli to go inside and then break it back to the outside and be wide open. Now, the one question I didn't ask the coaches regarding all of the special rules is onside kicks. I'm going to guess that they probably are not going to allow the onside kick since most everything else isn't it. And at this point in time with 8.30 to go and you're only down by seven points, now's not necessarily the time to do an onside kick, especially with the quick strike capabilities that the South offense has. Absolutely. You have to think that they're going to go deep with this one and maybe some time working there. You know the old saying, well, maybe not that old because this player's not that old, but how do you beat a great quarterback as you keep him off the field? And that's what the North has been able to do with a great offense here for the whole Southern side. And they've kept them off the field for most of the third and fourth quarter so far. But having to give the ball, and it all starts with in the back, ready to return this kick, is Riggs Powell. So right off the bat, we'll see what he's able to do. Last time he returned a kick, he had some great damage with that one. He's able to put them in some good field position. You have to think Coach Reese will be feeling pretty confident about his chances. Beto back. Kick on the way. Over to the right side. Powell lets it bounce at the 10. He'll take it now. On the hop. Finds a seam, gets across the 25, and brought down right about there. So good coverage by the North to stop that in the backfield. And he'll get a few extra yards after that. So the North will have to play some tough defense now if they're going to try to get back into this one. They're going to have to go that direction. You can see the intensity that they're playing with. Powell does not want to get down. It, it would just look like a gang tackle. Well, it was, for that matter. Everybody jumping on big old number 10 to make sure that he gets at least a knee to the dirt because I'll tell you one thing about this kid is he is not going to go down. You're going to have to tie his ankles together and then pull his feet out from underneath him for it to do it because he's going to fight you for each and every yard. Cone under center. Powell in the slot. Snap on the way, Cone fakes handoff right, he'll spin to his left, voids a tackle looking downfield, has a man open, and that ball is incomplete. What a play by Cohen to keep it alive there, but unable to make the connection. Just look on the replay of the work of this quarterback, able to juke one guy, steps up in the pocket, shows poise, keeps his eyes all the way downfield, but just incomplete at the end there, great throw comes up just short second and ten. Good effort both sides defensively you're right. Dyche was open down there may have taken his eyes off the ball just a little bit. If you look at the season Joe Rocha threw four touchdown passes on the season and he's been pretty good so far today. Powell gives and that'll be brought right across the 30 yard line by Rojas. Excuse me. That's going to be Medina, but still the all kind of Aptos lineup in there. We'll have a whistle, maybe a little bit of extra quicker activity going on in the field. Well, tempers are going to start to get a little short with just under eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And as we said before, J.D., there's your signal. These, these kids all want to go home with a W. Personal foul, defense 15 yards to the run. First down. You know, there's there's penalties that, as a coach, you can say, all right, I accept it. Not after the play. Those are the ones where 
You just have to be a little bit cooler under the helmet. South quick to the line, Powell under center. He will hand the ball off and across the 50 with a strong run, still on his feet and going is Serrano. Some more pushing and shoving, another flag comes in. And it almost seems like if this call goes a certain way, the North may be moving the South down the field for them. Well, right now they're doing a fantastic job. And there's another flag. So you're getting personal fouls all over the place as tempers are starting to be lost by the North. And I'm sure, knowing high school kids, that there is a lot of lipping going on right now. And, you know, it's not what you say, per se. It's the reaction that you physically do and... Sometimes you can pop off, somebody will pop you in the head. You get, a, you get away with a nasty one-liner, but the person that threw a forearm shiver gets the 15 yards. We get a personal foul against the north and a personal foul against the south. They're offset. So those will not hurt anybody. Because you see Coach Reese, though, grabbing his team in a huddle as he's firing them up here. And Morris will do the same on that side. Well, one of the things, the coaches are firing their teams up, but they're also trying to calm their teams down. It's like, look at this is a football game. If you want to kick something, kick the football. Absolutely. Either team can't really afford penalties right now. The South trying to put this one away, and the North trying to climb back into it. One of their better opportunities at a stop so far. Second down, ball will be placed right about the 48-yard line. You got the almost all ab toss offense in there. Now you do have the all Aptos offense in there as Serrano shots off to the field. Fabian was in there and now you look out there, there were 23 Aptos players who were allowed or got the honor to play in this game. 23 Aptos seniors, 11 of them are on the field right now. Clock will so. run. Hurry to the line there by the South. Powell under center. Hikes the ball. And he will give and that's going to be a few yards on the carry there. Rojas right about the marker. We'll see where they spot it. That's going to make the difference here in this one. Rojas tackled by Fogelquist, number 77, who did a nice job from his interior lineman position. Spot it right on the 45-yard line. First here's, down. Here's your inside handoff. And Vogelquist just hangs on to Rojas right from behind the line of scrimmage. It's a good job of penetration by the defensive front for the north. So, Powell under center. He'll work with two split backs again in a kind of a makeshift hurry up. Powell gives and he'll get to about the 40 yard line. Solid run there by him and he really is earning that nickname of the freight train. Just keeps those legs churning so well even after the first contact. You see him coming up the middle. There's your outside contact real quick by number 65, Tyler Marshall. And he drives, but you can see what makes Powell an effective runner and all runners this way. He stays square, shoulders in, slightly downhill read, but he's got great leg action. He's driving forward. He's staying square to the line of scrimmage. Ball on the 41. Powell fakes the handoff, looking downfield, has a man. That's Davis again on the connection. Beto with the shoestring tackle right around the five. Another time that this play has worked so well in that connection. First and goal for the South. Little play action. There's your fake. Now a roll to the right. Plenty of time. He could actually got his feet set. Deitch had already beaten Bayetto down there, but there's a last shoe string tackle. Noah just having a tough time. They're picking on him on that side. Remember, Powell ran over him earlier in the game, and they're just a little pitch and catch. And that's just fun execution from the quarterback to the wide receiver. Powell quick to the line again. Ball will be in the inside, and that is going to be right around the goal line. No signal yet from the official, as it looks like it was about inside a yard short. Inside handoff went to number three. As Isaac going to be DeStout. second down and goal. That was to Stout on that one. And short of the goal line, JD, watch this. You're going to see motion to start to go away, then a quick back the turn inside three. handoff to DeStout, who starts to go off that left tackle, and he had a pretty good size hole. Yeah. Get some movement here on this one. Flag thrown. Have to imagine this will be called a false start. And I'll tell you, everybody on the north side was pointing at everybody on the south side. The south wasn't pointing at anybody. So the officials will have another meeting here. For the south, this would be a big score. 
They're able to get it here late in the, the fourth, and the they north. will call it against the north. So the move at half the distance to the goal. Half the distance to the goal. Right the play. Encroachment, encroachment is the call against the north. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Go second down. Which makes it second and a small lean down. into the end zone. Maybe about a quarter of a yard at this point. You, you think the, the number 10 is just going to take it and snap and go? Powell, and that's exactly what he does, pushing and fighting, and no signal yet. May have gotten stopped there. There's a good surge by the defensive front by the Riggs by the north. The keeper. He stopped short of the goal. And line. they It'll say he was stopped short. Take a peek. Look at this great push up front. Defensive line. Can't uh, see where north Riggs north. is, but I'll tell you one thing. See the that front go through. Looks like a storm front. Give that'll be across the right side and in touchdown. Strong running play there by the South. As Serrano is able to bring that one in on third and goal. Extend this game to a two-point, a two-score game pending the extra point. Serrano, strong run on that one. Well, one of the things that when you, the type of offense that Aptos has, you can see them, and for a lot of these squads, they don't wait and wander to the line of scrimmage, break the huddle right to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball. Luna's kick, kick is, is underway, and it is good. So, 5.03 left, 35-21, and look at this replay again by Serrano, and he got some great blocks there. Just, this is a great job by him, too. His old 78, Yovanovich was pushing, and Serrano had his hand right at him. He just rides that big lineman right up on in. Well, the 6th Annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl is presented by the Santa Cruz Host Lions Club. All proceeds from the game benefit programs supporting hearings and sight conservation, as well as on the development of our community's youth. Find out more at santacruzlions.org. So we hear some cheering from the south side lines, and for the north, down two scores, five minutes left in this game, and... It's going to be a tough road here, but I think Coach Morris is going to let his team fight it out as, again, this game all about the camaraderie, building those new friendships as both coaches have seemed to emphasize throughout the game. They've done that one, and knowing Coach Morris and Coach Reese, they're not going to let their players quit. And you know what? There's not a quitter out there in any of these players. They're all winners. Line drive kick by Luna, fielded by Corbella. He gets across the 30, makes his way to the right side, and near the right sidelines, pushed out of bounds at about the 35. And a flag comes in again. So some more as my collar commentator, Kurt Edwards, called Lippin. And we'll see what the call is and who this one goes against. And not the way you'd like to see this game end, but reflecting the passion of these players to really come out here for this fans tonight. Now, at last, last year when they played, the South was victorious over the North. And it'll be a personal foul against the South. Now, there's one thing you're going to have to take, teach these young players. If you're going to have a personal foul, and don't do it in front of the other teams. For the play, personal foul, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. They're all seniors. They ought to just take a look and go to the numbers. So here comes Corbella again on the replay. You see him making his way to the right side. And looks like just some extra activity there at the end by 67. And that'll tack on 15 yards to the run. Coach Reese trying to make a late switch there. So the North will begin this one already in the South Territory. Just under five to play here. Rocha under center. He threw a great touchdown to Locatelli last time. See what they're able to do here. Locatelli in motion. The ball be headed off by him. Tries to go to the right side. He's going to be dragged down in the backfield. And some great penetration there by the South. And it started with Alec Lona. Good read by the linebackers. You can see motion coming that way. And Lona had already beaten his block. He did a nice job. He kept his outside arm free and just slid to the backfield. Look until he really didn't have anywhere to go. And I'll tell you one thing. L Lona, who plays for St. Francis, runs a what they call the fly. Locatelli also and Rocha run a similar style offense. So as soon as Lona saw the ball come in his direction, he played it perfectly. Flat to the line of scrimmage, got a little penetration, kept his outside arm free. Second and long now. Rocha under center. Corbella is the deep back. Locatelli in motion under the tight end. Rocha keeps the run to his right. He's got tons of pressure in his face, and he finally will be dragged down around the 40-yard line. 
And the South defense coming up big here. Two successive tackles for losses. And where Rocha had a chance to look, there's Storm right in his face, makes him pull it down there. Good set of blocking, but Storm doesn't quit. Number 89 out of Aptos, he has just got a motor on him that goes from kickoff to final whistle, but great defensive coverage down the field by the defensive backs by the South. So it's third and 20 now. Just over three to play, Roca under center. Rolls to his right, gets a good block by Corbella. Steps up, almost tackled, now he'll shake a tackle. Ball comes out, trying to pop on it is Corbella, and that's gonna be a fight for the ball. Looks like number 58 for the North has recovered the ball, and Ortiz may have prevented a fumble there. Player down, and that one, absolute chaos for the Northern offense. For the South, though, good now, play. Rocha trying to get out of there on his own, almost gets it. Gets a pretty good shot to the head, and down he goes. And then it's just a question of who's going to come up with the ball. Unfortunately for the North, they did. Ortiz was able to flop on top of it. But Rocha is still down. But now he's going to be able to get back up, pop up. And in the rules of high school ball, he's going to have to trot off to the side and stay off for at least one play. But he took a pretty good shot. But it shows you how tough this young quarterback is. You know, he's... He's not, he's not that, you know, as far as offense, because of the style of offense that Santa Cruz has. He only threw for 329 yards this year. Not a guy that is known for throwing the football. Beto to kick, good snap. And he takes his time with this one. Spiraling kick, fair catch called for, and will be made at about the 32 yard line. Saparito secures the ball there, and if you're Coach Reese, I think at this time it's maybe not quite time for the victory formation, but have to be thinking in that direction. It's not quite time for it, but here's one thing that Bobby Bowden, when I went to coaches' conventions, and, I, and I've other coaches won, it's not my job to stop playing football. It's your job to stop me from scoring, and the intensity that both of these clubs are playing with they're not going to stop until you see a whole bunch of zeros on that board, and it's in the time section. First down, the South will begin. And we'll get a flag here as there's going to be a late substitution. It looks like number 49, Gabe Hernandez, was trying to make it off the field in time for the North. And I'd imagine that's what the call will be, as it didn't look like anyone was moving up around the offensive line. And they'll wave it off, so I guess Hernandez was able to get his toes out of bounds just before the snap got off. And a lot of first and 10 at 31. A lot of times they'll wave it off if in the official's opinion he was going to make it and he was not going to be part of the play or be in the opinion of the other team somebody that they have to deal with. Cone under center on first down. Drops, looks to his right. He'll make a throw there and going to be tackled right about the 35-yard line. And as soon as our receiver caught the ball, he was unable to really go anywhere. So... Three yards or so. Second down, seven to go. Ball right around the 35. Santos with the catch on that far side. And it looked like it was Dalton. Travis Dalton, number 21, on the hit. Dalton, Beto both in there. Second and seven. Cone bobbles the snap. He'll just have to fall on it. So it'll be third down now. Interesting play there by Cohen as just a low snap, couldn't really do much with it, just safe option, just fall on the ball, secure it, live to fight another day. Exactly, good call on that one, J.D. He was looking downfield, looking for something else, and just did not want to watch the ball right on into his hands. So it's third down now. Cohen under center. Two wide receivers to his left. He'll roll in that direction. Looks back across the middle of the field. Has one man deep as Dage, and he's going to try to make a play back to the ball, unable to come up with it. Austin doing a great job of just fighting for that ball. You look at uh, Taylor Cohen on the season. He's threw for 22, over 2,200 yards. He gets that ball hung up there a long time. Everybody down there, good coverage defensively by the North. Robbie McClure, number 28, down on the coverage. But Cohen for through for 30 touchdowns, was only picked off six times. 
completed 163 passes, so he can throw the ball. Corbella back to receive along with Locatelli. High spiraling kick to Corbella. He'll let that ball bounce and be down right around the 35 yard line. Call it on the 37. So that'll be a first down for the North as they set up here with about a minute and 15 left to play in this one. Taylor Price gets his hands on the ball for the down. It's gonna have, it's gonna, quick little turnaround here for the Northern offense and see what they're able to do. I'd like to see them, maybe Rocha and, and Locatelli have one more connection left in them. It would be nice to see for, you know, the game is never over, correct, Yogi, Barra, but Good shot at this one being at least a decision being in, not in too much in doubt. But it would be great to see the North come up with one more touchdown, get 28 points to see the connection. But you got the Wildcat, Corbella at quarterback. So Corbella under center, takes the ball and he will give it to the handoff here on the left side, making a turn around the corner, juking a defender and across for the first down. So good piece of running there by P by the north there. First and ten as they get out of bounds, they're stopping the clock and a few people slow to get up over on the sideline. Oh, passing easy, number 22 with the ball and we're going around the corner. Got some nice blocks to get there. Ball in motion. Shooting right across the line of scrimmage. Passing easy is pretty quick and he's taken out of bounds and he's getting a lot of help from everybody else. So it's going to be first down just around midfield here with Still a two-score game here. And no Rocha there in the in the huddle, so. Yep, we'll keep going with, with the Wildcat offense. Yep, let Corbella do what he does best, run the ball or hand off to somebody who's got two good running backs behind, next to him. Bordella, man in motion is passing easy. He'll get it and make it just across the 50 for about two. Hard piece of running there by Passanisi as he met that hit head on, but only a gain of about two yards there, second and eight. He's a tough running back, you're right. Get man in motion, man in motion, try and influence the defense to do something, and then who knows, you either keep the ball yourself or you give it to one of the other running backs that you've got there. You know, one of them is Locatelli number five, and the other one might be Benko over on the right side. Both talented running backs. Second and eight, Borodella. Give to him, he'll keep it himself this time and get a few more yards. Three defenders there in on that tackle. We're gonna get a flag thrown. Rondez, Raymond Rondez, number 21 out of Monta Vista Christian, comes in on that tackle and just does, I don't know, we'll just call it a flyby. He realizes he was in trouble, everything's done. There he goes, whoop, right up over the pile. Nice little barrel roll. He'll get credit for an assist on that. Personal foul. Illegal helmet contact on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Against him for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. So that'll turn a short gain into a pretty decent run here. Ball right around the 31-yard line for the North. Clock continues to run, about 20 seconds left in this one. This is gonna be it, my friend. Rocha will be under center. Good way to have him finish the game off. Step back, he's looking down the right side. Ball tipped and it'll be intercepted. Ball running back down the left side. The South trying to make a move here, cutting back towards the middle and coming across the field, across midfield, barely Locatelli bringing him down at the end and capping off the game is Luna, the kicker with a good interception there and that'll be it as the Southern field, as the Southern team charges the field as they surround their kicker, winning this game 35-21 in a, just a very well put together piece of work by them all around. And let's take a look again at this last play. Rocha gets have his arm or ball tip just as he as he was throwing it. And Luna, right spot, right time. You spot him a mile away with the wrong color pants on, but he's now living the moment. He's got an interception and he's trying to and take it to the house and he was tackled right about midfield. You know, as far as he's concerned, his high school football season ended in glory. Absolutely, the guy ending the game with the ball in his hands, making some moves as he kind of moved down towards the other side of the end zone. But that's going to be the final. 35-21 is the score. The South taking the victory in the sixth annual Lions Senior Bowl. And nice little way to end the game. It was good to see Rocha out there to make one final throw. But 
Luna comes away, I guess, with the glory at the end there, making some moves towards the sideline. Yeah, an excellent game. Very fun. Great job by the Santa Cruz host Lions to put this wonderful contest on, second year in a row that we've got a chance to televise this game, second year in a row that the South has come on top in this game. And let's face it, you know, you've got a lot of great players. The South was able to rotate their quarterbacks in, two distinctly different type of quarterbacks. And Riggs Powell, who's just done a fantastic job throughout the year, showed why he was one of the premier players in the SECAL as far as getting the all count on all county league, everything you want, he was it. He's fabulous with the ball, without the ball. And we saw him on a kick return. And yeah, he's a locomotive. 200 pounder. It'd be great to see he and a lot of these other seniors, once they've all finished graduating, come here to Cabrillo and continue on their football prowess at you know here locally so all of us could come and get a chance to see him. But if some of these guys get the opportunity, they get hooked up with a four-year school. More power to them. As long as they can continue on playing football, having education, and having fun, I think it's fantastic. I absolutely have to agree with that. As you see, the Southern team celebrating with their newly won trophy. Again, second time in a row that they're winning this game. Big victory here for Coach Reese as he was able to coach his team to be co-champions of their league. And it kind of shows that now finally hitting his stride here, a few years under his belt now, getting his team in his system. And it kind of shows what he's able to do with the Southern squad today. He did a great job keeping it together. Both of these coaches did a nice job with a lot of emotional, very talented football players that, a lot of pride. You saw a lot of pride out there, JD, and you saw the temper start to flare towards the end. They want to play, they want to make that extra hard hit or put that little emphasis on the tackle, and sometimes the laundry came out. And I would bet mm, 10 times out of 11, that laundry would stay in the pocket because during a regular season game, they're not going to do it. But you saw the coaches rein these kids in, and they did a good job. And Coach Reese down there right in the middle of it. I think he just got a shower. As a matter of fact, his jacket looks like he just got a shower. And more power to him. One week of practice, and both of these squads came out and played a heck of a football game. Absolutely agree with that. Both coaches doing a great job at recognizing the talent they have around them. And players really seeming to enjoy this game on both sides of the ball. And so you have to like that. I think many of the game's keys were hit in terms of camaraderie, in terms of the friendships made. And let's take a look forward, though, at our CTV Sports continued coverage of the basketball season looking forward. Again, we have on the 15th, St. Francis versus Aptos, Harbor versus Scotts Valley after that, Santa Cruz versus Soquel and then the SCCAL championship game on the 19th. It's going to be good. And you watch these basketball games that are coming in here. One of the ones that's going to be oh. fun to watch is Santa Cruz against Soquel. Those two teams traditionally just go at it, hammer and tong, all the way right on through. So that's going to be a fun game to watch and always a popular SCCA championship tournament is also fun. And so it's been... All right, well, that's been a ter terrific game. We're going to send it away for a break when we come back. Again, the South, 35-21 in this one at the end of four. And that's your final score. We'll send it away. Welcome back to the sixth annual Santa Cruz County Lions Senior Bowl. Final score, 35 South, 21 North, and we'll go down the field with Kelsey Orton, who has Riggs Powell with her. Thanks, guys. I'm here with player of the game, Riggs Powell. You had a nice win tonight. How are you feeling? Uh, good. It was super fun. I don't know. Just a good time hanging out with everybody, playing another game, so it was fun. Do you have anything to say to the Santa Cruz Host Lions for one last football game of your high school career? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, they should definitely continue doing it. It was super fun. Uh, I don't know, it's just fun to play another game when you don't think you're going to be able to play with all these guys. And then you get all the other teams in here, too. So it's just, I don't know, it's fun. Talk about what it's like coming together with guys that you've played against your entire high school career. Uh, I don't know, there was a lot of crap talking at the end there. Like, everybody was getting a little heated just because we had a lot of guys. We were on the team with, like, more guys from uh, the MLB League, so we didn't really play them. But, I mean, we didn't play them 
too many times. So I don't know. It's fun playing against the guys, but all, just all the guys together is just I don't know. It's just fun. All the all the different teams, seeing how everybody acts. Everybody's all a lot similar, a lot more similar than you might think. So I don't know. It's pretty cool. Do you have plans for next year? Uh, still working on it right now. Not not sure where I'm going yet. Well, best of luck to you and great game. Thank you. Back up to the booth. George H. Wilson Mechanical Contractors, family owned and operated for over 90 years, providing heating, plumbing, and mechanical contracting services. G.O. Wilson is a proud member of Think Local First, on the web at geohwilson.com. And it's been a great game here as we see some highlights coming in from you first. Rocha with that great throw in the back corner to Locatelli, and that was the South's only score of that one. But Powell finding Deitch again down the right side as he was able to set up this nice little run here by Serrano. And it's a great run there by the South. And then the North trying to get something going and the South just absolutely smothering them. Rocha there sacked in the backfield, trying to step up again in the pocket. Some more pressure on him to bring him down. This one, he coughs the ball up after that one. And the South able to just play some solid defense. On the last play there, Luna comes away with the interception, makes some few shifty breaky moves to try to get past the coverage but unable to really do much there but a great way for him to go out there and you only have not too much scoring in the second half of this game but the South comes away with the victory and Coach Reese with a shower here in this one is he's he's a smiling man after that one and you have to be after this beautiful shiny trophy comes home with you that the South players are very happy to have now again 35-21 your final score here South with an impressive victory over the North. And it was an impressive victory. Just a fun afternoon and early evening of football here at Carl Conley Stadium on the campus of Cabrillo College where, as I said before, I hope some of these young players get a chance to extend their football career. And for the North, it's pretty much been about packing up in the South, kind of all over the field celebrating with their fans here. And... It's been an absolutely great game here, but let's look forward to the next game that we have going forward. That'll be St. Francis versus Aptos, Sunday, January 15th at 7 p.m. So please be sure to tune into that one. Some fantastic coverage again as we continue our sports season, shifting away from football now into basketball. Yep, it's getting a little bit too cold to be out here. It's going to get onto the hardwood with two very, very competitive teams. And fantastic here we again. We are going to be signing off here. So this has been a terrific game. Thank you so much for bringing us to you again. And this is J.D. Hatton for Kurt Edwards. Thanks so much. The South win this one 35-21 in the final. And thank you for tuning in to CTV Sports. We'll see you next time.